Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And sorry for our tardy. Yeah, thank you. I was looking for the word. I just think for, for some reason when someone says tardy, I think of pube. And I don't know why, but like they just You're go not in getting together. your parking pass back ever again because you <laughs> have too many tardies, too many demerits. Yeah, I forgot to I forgot to to save storage so that we could make this, but it wouldn't let me. Never mind. The point is this. You can count on me to pleasure myself tonight. As yeah, usual. It's going to be fun. You're um, like a fish. Make sure you take pictures. Uh the other thing do uh so also we were Mike and I had talked about before previously we talked about our love and devotion and, and some like religious worship of a show called Hills. Uh, I think that we're going to start a religion out of it, and uh, Stephen Amell is going to be pretty much a Jesus Christ figure in the new cult. Uh, don't worry about it. You can join. The membership's free at first. But, unfortunately, there's probably not going to be a third season, and it sucks. Big old sweaty Donkey Kong-sized nutsacks because the ending of the second season, wow, wow. I was telling Mike, I texted him. I finished it up a couple of days ago, and I say if they don't if they don't make a third season to at least wrap this up, or at least an hour and a half like made for TV movie or something to wrap this up. This is the biggest cock tease like since George Michael told straight girls that he was available. It's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely unacceptable. But yeah, you guys got to watch it. It's really worth it. But now I don't even want to like tell you to watch it because it ends like this, and it's just going to be like a, a gaping. Honestly. Hole. If it, even if they, oh, those are my favorite. If even if it does never come back again, I feel like I got enough. Like I, it definitely shouldn't end. I don't want it to end. I'm not ready for it to end. But I would say that it's one of those shows that it closed enough of its storylines that like it's not one of those shows that if you watch it and it never comes back again, it's not going to be worth your time. It's still worth your time. You're I just think... going to get pissed that they didn't fucking follow up the awesome storyline that they were about to stick your fingers in. Yeah, well, I, I would say, say but... I would say that would be true, except for the fact that Amel, which is the main character, they they completely nuclear fucked his whole storyline. Now it goes off into a divergent path, which you have no idea what, what's going to go I... on because you also look at the mental health history of his family, and now it's going to now he's in this situation. Yeah. I have to make up a happy story in my head to if they never yeah, come he, back. Yeah, I'll he's going to start a my... foundation like Christopher Reeve and start a bunch of charities and things like that. Not no. well, what he should do is he should write a book. He should Stephen Amell. If they don't bring the show back, just write a fiction book and, and tell the story. Because I'll do. I, I, I literally, I, if I had the money, I would start a fundraiser. I mean, we could probably raise like five cents to go yeah, towards five, a, twelve a, a dollars movie to get the last of it. But also uh, another little uh, tidbit of news: I did watch and finish the MK1 storyline. I didn't play it. I didn't have the money to buy it, and I don't really play fighting games anymore. I'm too old. My reaction time's not there anymore. But I played. Um, he really I, I fights watched, in the ring though. Well, no, but you you got to like be able to that do all fight. those combos and shit, and I can't do it. Like the I know. figures just don't move as fast anymore. Uh, I can't do it either. And that's exactly what she said. But I will say uh, the MK1 storyline is actually really good. It's not bad at all. And they've opened up the possibilities at the end of this. Like Midway can do anything uh, with with this uh, with the games going forward. Like it's insanely good. It was really really well done. Yeah. Uh... I is Sean Claude Van Damme in the game or is no? That that's the only game? shitty part about. It, but they do it was so close because they do talk about different realities and like merging of reality. So in a different universe, oh. it, but yeah, but I'm you don't the really, multiverses though. Well, I know, but you don't see him. You don't see him in the game. You see, uh, but he is in the game, but he's not in the game, which sucks. Because I really, he's not I'm EA. really, huh? It's not EA then. It's in the game. Yeah, it's not in the it's game. Like it's not in the game. Uh, set up. But no, you, but but Jean Claude. Uh, yeah, dude, that's what I that's what I thought. I was gonna I was kind of hyped for it when I was watching the the movie that when they introduced Johnny Cage that it was gonna be Van Damme because it was like a new rebooted universe from the ending of Mortal Kombat 11. So MK1 was like a new universe. So in this new universe, I thought it was gonna be Jean Claude Johnny, and it wasn't. It was just a generic. I mean, he's a good actor. It was just a different, actor, but it sucked. Oh, wasn't actually Jean Claude. No, Jean Claude's in it, but he's not in the story. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. I, I was thrown off because our mobilization is still green right now, and I don't no. know how, but it's still. Oh green. yeah, well, they love Mortal Kombat over here, folks. That, that must uh, be it. They, it's that Ed Boon's. It's on. Ed Boon energy. And speaking of Ed Boon, Ed Boon gave an interview talking about that uh, legendary offer to Jean Claude Van Damme about why it didn't happen and things like that, and how excited they were to actually get a hold of him to do it now. But he said that when they were like in their 20s, when they were doing Mortal Kombat, they had an idea to call it like they were, it wasn't going to call John Claude's Mortal Kombat. It was going to be called John Claude or it was going to call Van Damme Fighting. That was the name of the game. It was called Van Damme Fighting. 
And they I said, they really, that. My, I, my, I was like, yeah, sounds awesome. And they were like, it was like 1991 or 1990. And they said like, you know, uh, or 1991, they said blood sport was huge. Universal soldier was out around that time. And they said they reached out, but they were like 26, 27 year old kid. And they went to their people or his people. And they were like, no, like pretty much how that one dude told, you no for the interview at yeah. comic con. It was Michael pretty much Bean. like, that. I was like, no. Uh, yeah, well, he said, and then I think Ed Boone was just trying to make sure that the, the, the minefield wasn't like lit. And he was like, well, maybe Jean-Claude didn't get the message. His people that were representing him, they were like, no, nah, it's a video game. You guys suck. Video games are for fat losers with Cheeto fingers. There's no way Jean-Claude, who's the fittest, most handsome looking man in the world with a great haircut, is ever going to agree to be a part of a stupid, stupid video game, a.k.a. Street Fighter movie. But that's what happened. But I think what really happened is there was just too much coke stuck up Jean Claude's nose, and he was like, "Yeah, I can't answer the phone. I can't breathe. I can't talk." So that's what happened. Yeah, I think that you know, I I, re I read something about Jean Claude uh, on the set of Street Fighter when that was going yeah. on, and the dude was like friends with him. He's like, "I've worked with Jean Claude before, and we had a great time." I don't remember the guy's name, but he was on the set, and he was like, "Sean was," or he was like, uh, "Jean Claude was so coked out." during the whole making of that movie, they're like, you never knew what to expect. He was like, it was actually really fun. Cause some days he would come in and he would direct. And then sometimes he would be sort of <laughs> flirtatious and doing. shit. He said he would be flirtatious. I was like, to you, I was confused. I was like, was he flirtatious to you, dude? Cause I could see Jean-Claude be like, you know, Peter, <laughs> we could go in the back. We yeah, could... You know, because of my big legs, I can hold you. No problem. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah wrestling, I, you know? Jean-Claude was uh, so fucking high on the set of street body with a duck and <laughs> he thought he really could do the Hadoukens. <laughs> like, he did say he would call in. They had a yeah. hell of a time scheduling that show because they said he would he would get fucked up all night long and he would just call in and never show up because he's like he wasn't sleeping. He was just coked out like twenty four seven. Yeah, I could just see. I I wish I'd been on set with Jean Claude Van Damme back in the coke days. Like I bet he walked in on set looking like Chevy Chase from Fletch with all that coke <laughs> just powdered on his face. It's like yeah. I like it. <laughs> no, that says a lot. That says a lot about Jean Claude too, dude. Because like when Steven Seagal, Steven Seagal was sober and he was a dick and he was like full of himself and like trying to fight people and shit on set and like, and Jean Claude Van Damme was coked out. You got this big muscle bound dude who's who can kick everyone in the room's ass and he's <laughs> coked out of his mind and you still don't hear any stories of him like trying to beat people up or bullying people. He was just like getting naked on set and shit. And it's like I'm a threat today. I'm a threat. Yeah. Well, you know, he was like he's just a funny well dude. The combination of, of actually learning martial arts and ballerina taught him <laughs> discipline. So he's yeah, like, I, I will get it. high and do a coke, but I will not harm you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I don't want to fight. I just want to eat. Yeah, I love John claude but dude, I think that the whole Ed Boone thing, and he was talking about that story, they said they offered multiple times. They said they went back and forth with John claude John claudes people multiple times to get them on board with the Mortal Kombat first one, and they couldn't, they wouldn't see eye to eye on it, but, but, uh, yeah, they were like how excited they were. That I don't know if Jean Claude reached out or they reached out to Jean Claude because there's no way that anybody played Mortal Kombat, the original Mortal Kombat on Sega or the arcade, and didn't think that wearing the uh, the the, the Bloodsport like shorts and the and the guy with the sunglasses that that wasn't obviously styled Johnny Cage after Jean Claude. Like it looked like Jean Claude from yeah Bloodsport. They should actually give him some royalties for that. <laughs> like, honestly, no, not, that they, I don't know how much money Mortal Kombat's made, but they're like, hell no. Jesus Christ. He, he would have been fine with that. It's probably a good thing he did get Mortal Kombat, or he would have been able to buy all the coke he wanted. Well, he, <laughs> he had another chance, either. too. When he when Mortal Kombat, the movie, was coming out, he could have been a part of that, and he chose Street Fighter. Talk about sure. a great idea. This is true. This is true. It is. Child of the Corn, thank you so much, my friend. He says, wow. Wow. So, oh, no, I know. He was, he was doing, what? Oh, yeah. Senator. Put a finger in his butt. He's flatlining. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> Sorry. Froze up like good old gobble gobble turkey neck. What's up, fellas? I remember in 2003 and in sixth grade, went with my friends and parents to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake for my B-Day in October. Forever classic. Now, that's a hell it's of on a the list. That's a hell of a uh, good memory for October. You should put that Fuck in the yeah. key locket and wear it around your neck forever. I never, I we sure, somebody sure. asked us a long time ago about what our fa like favorite Halloween moments were or whatever. I couldn't remember, but that sounds fucking sweet. I don't think I saw TCM in theaters. Uh, I did. I do remember seeing it in theaters, but I know that. Uh, um, what's cool about that? I'm sorry, I'm having a brain fuck. No, I did. I went with you. Uh, yeah, I, it was me, you, and my ex, and uh, somebody. Yeah, we all went. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, I remember. I just I know I was there because I remember almost falling asleep during the chase scene at the end. Even though I liked the movie a lot, I always thought that chase scene went on a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, dude, I tonight is all about that's that's a great thing to bring up. Child of the Corn Cob. 
Uh, it's a great thing to bring up because tonight's tier list is going to be October horror movie releases. All of these movies that we're going to talk about all released during the month of October. And oh my God, there's a shit ton of them. Probably going to end up doing a two-parter for this. I think this is going to end up being sure. two videos sure. because it's so fucking long, Steven. Uh, there's like 90 movies in there and I left a bunch out. So yeah. Um, I do remember I do remember fun. seeing it with you because I don't remember who I was. But somebody was like, oh my God, is this real police footage? Because when it was like, and I'm like, God, you fucking dolt. That yes, I, obviously. I lifted, I lifted my head out of Jay's lap, and I was like, oh, my God, it's not real police footage. She was like, bitch, get your head back. You finish like, up what you're doing, then you ask questions, is what you I You promised yelled. me Red Lobster after this. You're going to get it. Just keep sucking it. Uh, but no, yeah, uh, I, I remember that, yeah. And then I remember, like, I was distracted for most of the movie because of Jessica Bill's big, fat, juggly ass in yeah. your face. In a good way. In a hot way, yeah. Yeah. Speaking exactly of Jessica Biel and hotness, I watched that. Did you watch that Hot Ones interview um, with the NSYNC? Uh, I did not, because I like women. I do too sometimes. But <laughs> uh, you know, the the thing is, uh, Justin Timberlake is like, uh, well, he looks old. I mean, he's. I mean, we're old, but he looks like like crow's eye, crow's feet, like like up. It didn't look great. But him and JC, I think, has got like a thing. Like they're they're fucking shitty with each other. Because oh, really? called, yeah, there's ones. I, I, you know, I like. There's like a, it's like a tension rivalry, but it's like, you're just being, you're getting along for the sake of getting along for the rest of the band. You can sense it. Yeah. Kind of like what we do for the channel, like where we hate <laughs> each other, but we're just trying to do things to keep going. Yeah. Nobody but, say anything. Nobody yeah, nobody say say, anything. yeah. But you could cut the goddamn tension with a butter knife. But anyway, everyone shut the fuck up. Yeah. Well, they're sitting there and, uh, they're like trying to do the last dab or they're doing a hot one. I don't know which one it is. But Jay really said the quiet one. part out loud. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I should have used my inside voice. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, JC's like, come on, don't be a, oh, no, not JC. Justin's like, don't be a pussy. And I can't, don't be a pussy. That's how he sounds. And then yeah. JC was like, he lo you could tell, dude, he looks at him. He's like, all right, you're like at like a 10. I need you to get back down to a six. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit! And it was like, it was fucking awkward because they all like everybody else did that awkward like, ha, 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 ha. like someone made a really shitty like joke at a, like a really rich person's party. It was like awkward, yeah. like they were covering it. But JC was pissed. You could tell, and he was like, "You need to bring it down to a six And Damn, I was like, dude. "Sing off, sing off, <laughs> sing off." Who can sing dick. better? This I promise you. <laughs> I would watch that fight. Now that is fuck all the Logan Paul stuff. JC Chavez versus Justin Timberlake in the ring. Oh yep. my god! I know. I do. It was funny because the only one that was normal, uh, and really, I just and like you could actually relate to him was Chris Kirkpatrick, the the kind of the, the fat one now, the one that used to yeah, have the dreads. You could get your ass with. Yeah, he was like, yeah, but he's like, he doesn't ass. care, dude. He was like, I don't care. I'm making millions of dollars. I made millions of dollars. I'm not trying to be all hot and shit. I don't care about any of that stuff. <laughs> And he yeah, was just like, man. he was trying to sit there and he was like, listen, I knew my strength. When we came in, there was parts I couldn't sing. And I knew that other people were going to make that part up. So I knew that I sucked in certain things. And, and then one of them got pissed, like, speak for yourself, buddy. And he was like, I don't care. I, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud, but I just did. Because he, <laughs> he, like, he, like, so well, he was like, I could hit high notes. I knew I couldn't do low or soprano. I could do tenor. So that's what my job was. And I could fall into that. Because I think it was around the idea about how different it was if they were all independent, great solo singers. And that if they were brought together, they'd be jostling for position and being jealous of each other all the time. That's true. Yeah. I mean, honestly, at that point, you're making so much money. Like, yeah. you know that sometimes they get on that tour bus and they're like, God damn it. If I see another 13-year-old screaming girl or I have to watch Justin fucking shake his ass one more time, I'm going to fucking lose it. And then you're like, well, I could be working at Arby's. So yeah. I'm gonna be all right. I, I guess be it's okay. better than I, I can just sit here and count my millions and then sing. Yeah. Did I say whiskey? Honestly, <laughs> honestly, God, I, I don't think I would last more than one tour if I was in in sync or something like that. And I, I'd be like, because you know, like they are at some point they were adults and they were doing like middle school stuff, like right, like middle school, like Mickey Mouse Club shit. At yeah. one, I think I'd probably do one tour. I would take a couple million dollars and be like, yeah, I'm a rock like, star. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do yeah, the rock I'm star thing. Being, I don't want to be up here and like. Be singing alongside and think that I'm somehow channeling the spirit of Jared Fogel with all these fucking like little kids. <laughs> yeah, out here. yeah, I'd rather go like, make music for adults. I'll see you later, though. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for yeah, the I million. Think, I think the amount of teen girls diddling themselves to you at some point has got to create like a weird friction uh, with whatever the balance of the universe is. I don't think you ever want that. Like, I know I mean, it's they've like been doing it since Benuto. I know. I'm just saying, like, I don't think, like, it's a good juju. It's like, it's not good soul juju to have that many underage people touching themselves to the thought of you. Put that on my tombstone. <laughs> yeah. It disrupts the, the fabric of space time. It, it should. It fucking should. Wolf of Elm Street says, going to the H45 convention in SoCal oh. this weekend. 
Wish you guys right, were there. Dude. I'll tag you in a few stories on Insta if it allows you to see. Love you guys. Love you too, hey, buddy. Thanks, Wolf. Uh, yeah, man, no. I don't have Insta, but you can tag me in my mind and maybe we'll connect each other over long distances. That's awesome that you get to go there, though, man. That's cool. Yeah, uh, I wish we could go, but we can't because it's too we far are away. Universally, and also we're universally hated by anything professional to deal with Halloween. I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. It's likely. It's likely not liked us but then again we general. actually have to be noticed by these people to even fucking be hated by them so it's possible that, that could, that's not true either that could be it all i know is that no i'm not gonna say it i'm not gonna say it jay but yeah probably not welcome by you guys we would be i'm sure but mm. <laughs> i don't think like they weren't giving us a fucking booth <laughs> i'll tell you that no. much grease fold my good man says it's a cash and carry world sometimes you pay a little mostly it's a lot sometimes it's everything you have Damn, this fortune cookie's deep as fuck, dude. <laughs> I believe I, that was Stephen King. Stephen King who said that, I think. I, I think, know. right? I wanted to put an R in there for some reason, but there's no R in Stephen King. Well, sure how about this one, Chris? Have you ever danced with the devil on a pale moonlight? <laughs> one time I ate Circa two 89. egg sandwiches. Circuit. Not 89. Michael Parton says, here the rider strike is ending, which is flame. Straight fire. That's cool, I hope I'm glad. Going, dude. I really hope so. To pay those people oh, yeah, and get us movies fucking made. That's another thing, dude. I forgot. Uh, Amel, Stephen Amel, speaking of uh, going back to um, Hills, might be in some deep shit anyway because he didn't support the writer's strike. I think through a couple of social media posts, he was like, I'm against it. I don't I don't support it. And so <laughs> the writers that were working on the show obviously went and did the strike. So even if they did renew a season, they might be pissed off and not want to come back and do it. There's a, yeah, well, when, when he came out and said was he was just kind of like, he sort of said that he just wasn't for striking in general. He was like, I'm not a fan of strikes. I think there's other ways. And he was like, I didn't vote for a strike. And then they took that and ran with it and just well, fucking true. started burying his name on all Twitter and everywhere and things like that. But you know what that motherfucker did after he said that? What? Went to the fucking, picked up a sign, went to the fucking picket line. Stood in mm -hmm. line with those fucking people. So I think the world should fucking forgive him. He, just regardless of how you feel about what he did, he went out there and he said, you know what? I'm going to go stand with those people and I'm going to say I'm sorry, basically. My bank accounts just, in jeopardy. Christ. Words. I like these people now. Duh. Possible. I never Possible. said that. Hey, the internet's going to internet. You say one bad thing, you're fucked. Yeah. You say Getting even better. one thing that's misconstrued, you're fucked. Meanwhile, Chris Brown, who beat the shit out of Rihanna, still wins VMA awards. <laughs> that's a crazy fucking world. Uh, it's a crazy world, Jay. No, nope. we're all just living in Chris Brown's world. Vagina men asses is what that stands for. <laughs> it's wild. Vaginal men's asses. Vaginal. I like to pretend men's butts are vaginas from time to time. They Adrian Yabara. Everyone has rough nights. Mm. You're not always batting a thousand. What's up, y'all? I'm drunk up, from tailgate. My frat knows how I like it. <laughs> knows Good, how to get bro. lit. Boy, I'll tell you, the young ladies, polite term, keep getting sex. Well, it's depending on what your age you are, that's fine to say. But considering you're a frat, I'm pretty sure you're okay, Adrian. Unless Hashtag you're like one of those alumni status. Damn, yeah. dude. That's for fucking crazy. Good for you, man. I'm glad you got home safe means. and you had a great time at the tailgate. And you didn't get any underage tail because you got to be careful with that. Uh, Don't mess with that. No. And uh, are Try you that in the, a small I, town. I, I want to ask, Adrian, are you in the alpha betas? The Is alpha. You, oh, girl! <laughs> you the, nerds! Nerds! Right? Fuck those assholes. Keep them out of your college campuses. And I'm going to go beat some ass and take some drugs. But you are right, though. <laughs> you are right. You, you, yeah, there's there's girls out there that are, like, super young, and they dress like that, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? The world is crazy. I don't mess. You, know, you don't mess. You take, take IDs. Take IDs. Yeah. Honestly, I hope that. I'm assuming that you're at least close to the age. Yeah, I'm sure he's a young guy. You don't want to mess with Texas. You know what I mean? And by Texas, I mean... You know what I mean? Yeah. Written in Texas, Tim. Uh -oh. I went out and saw. Legend, boy. I, I take Tang in the theater. It was electric, boy. Some big girl done screamed so loud it blew out my gallbladder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, got my hands on some lead paint this morning. Lead paint this morning. Tastes like childhood. Yeah, that's right, Written Tootin. Nothing, nothing better than waking up with some pancakes, some jack flaps, and some paint chips to go on the side yeah. and dip it in ketchup. Yeah. Ketchup be and good. mustard mix, actually, if you want to be technical about it, Rootin' Tootin'. Good for you, boy. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Got to do it, man. You got to do what you got to do. Hey, by the way, did you take that big heifer home or did you leave her there in the theater? Because you know and what? That, it, ain't, it ain't right to treat your cousin that way. No way, no how. 
Now he's going to take her to the fair next week. It's going to be all right. Going to get her a corn dog and everything. The holy okay. shit package. Sean Tubby123 says, Sup, Sexy's last stream had me rolling with these dating stories. Jay is Dracula, so bite me, big man. Okay. Mike, what bets you got tomorrow? Love yous. Oh, shit. I'll tell you what, buddy. I have not made any bets yet yesterday because I was rolling fucking fire last night and today. I'm on fucking fire with the bets i haven't even thought about nfl because you know what's going to happen oh, just yeah. like last week and the week before i'm going to have a great college saturday i'm going to make a little bit of money and then on sunday i'm going to fuck it up betting on stupid shit for the nfl because i can't bet nfl for shit but i'm gonna try i'm gonna Dude, fucking I try that goddamn and i love him don't get me wrong but kevin hart that fucking commercial that's going on constantly on youtube every time you click on a video where it's like hey guess what kentucky gable he's coming yeah. to you i'm like god yeah. damn it you short shit i don't want to on- fucking gable with your stuff Huh? On my birthday on Thursday, Kentucky, uh, uh, betting's officially legal in Kentucky. I mean, I've been doing it for the past three years, but it's officially legal now, and it's coming on my birthday. That's a sign that I should quit. And Sean, if you want me to buy you, pull your pants down. Thank you. <sighs> I had a friend that said that this girl that he dated nibbled on his dick like she bit it. You ever had that before, where the girl tried to use her teeth on accident? It's, sure, it's, a couple no, times. Dude, like, hey, it was, easy. It was but, purposeful, and it was the worst experience of all. It felt like goddamn your your dick was being dragged through like one of those wood chippers. Uh, like poor Michael, I can only imagine. But it was on my dick, and now she was like, and she thought she was doing something good. I was like, this is not a fucking a, a, a scene out of Saul. <laughs> like what the fuck? This isn't Hellraiser. Agony is your pleasure. It wasn't that. And I, she was like, this guy's like, no, you know what? Um, I I gotta go pee. So I'm not really feeling that. I gotta I just stopped her because it was hurting, dude. Like I felt like she was literally pulling this. Skin. I feel like I was having a second circumcision. Yeah, I, 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 I have to say this. It probably looked like that that dude in Ace Ventura's backpack. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, we know a girl like who had Davidson. sex with that yeah, guy, and I know that's a good story on another day. About Tommy <laughs> Davidson. I can't believe we know someone who had sex with that guy. The backpack, not just dude, sex, dude. That, she too. was treated like a goddamn straight hustling street hoe. <laughs> like it wasn't even like sex with that dude. <laughs> Backstage Betty's all right. Mike Bart says, I'm mad they casted Carl Urban as Cage. C- you, uh, <laughs> did they? Yeah, Carl Urban is Nick I Cage uh, or uh, Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat 2, hmm. the movie. And he's a little old. Well, but I, well I, it, depends on, yeah, it depends on how they're doing the if they're doing a jump in time and stuff. Because, like, if you look at Mortal Kombat 11 or Mortal Kombat 12, I don't remember which one, they do like a 20 year jump where Sonya and him got together, they got divorced, they had a kid. If they're doing it that way, I mean, it's. I mean, I I want to see Carl Urban in like in a, in a huge movie that does very well for him. That guy deserves it, dude. I want that, that guy to be a main character of something like horror. Like we missed our chance with Dread. That should have been an ongoing trilogy. Dread should have happened. The sequel should have happened. We should have had a third movie by now. He was awesome in that. And if we didn't get that, and I, and I love Affleck. Don't get me wrong, but Carl Urban would have been amazing as Batman. Absolutely amazing. Carl Urban could have knocked that shit out of the park. But you know, so. Mortal Kombat's not like the second Mortal Kombat movie is never going to be like a huge, massive, you know, Avatar type of movie or even a, you know, a Batman type of movie. But at least he, it's going to have a, a significant audience around it. So I'm glad that Carl Urban gets to have that. Cause I mean, again, that guy gets, he gets, I think he gets dipped out of Hollywood stuff a lot. And I, and I love that guy. I think he's great. I mean, look at the boys, dude. The boys is great. He's doing great in that. I think he, yeah, to be honest with you, I think he could play a, a fairly decent Johnny Cage. I think he's a good enough actor. I mean, all actors, anyway, generally speaking, have not all, but most have an egocentric problem with them. So I think that would work. I think so. So it's okay, Michael. Don't worry. It's going to be good. Did you like Mortal Kombat 1? I can't remember, Michael. Maybe you did. I don't know. I I don't remember if I, I don't remember what we gave it. I think we kind of liked it, but then we didn't. So I think we gave it a mid, mid run score. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Yeah, movie. we didn't like it quite as much as everybody else did, I feel like. Yeah, I think we gave it a mid tier score, though. I don't think we gave it like a two or anything like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, completely. All right. Hey, let's do a couple of these real quick because we got so many to get to. We'll get right back to the super chitties in a minute. But Are right we still now, monetized? I'm squ- uh, double checking. Um, Emilio Estevez in the room upstairs. And he says, What's that? No, we are no longer monetized. Somebody duck, dude. I swear to God. That asshole. Fucking Bombay. Gordon Bombay, you asshole. Woo! We're too hot for TV. 
Uh, well, at least we stick to the script. If we didn't get, we didn't deter at all. Your favorite show is maintaining its originality by not going off the script. That's par for the course. Demonetization. Oh, yeah. Same old shit, different, different, different trailer park, man. Uh, so I already put Halloween where it goes. We know where it's good. That was an uh, October yeah. release. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, all of That's these. That looks real nice up there. Hope her yeah. kids are doing well. Halloween. I hope it's doing well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I heard all, they had a rough patch during the summer. This whole package over here, all these beautiful little tiddly widdlies, these are all fucking movies that yeah. released in the month of October. Horror There's movies. no fucking that's a part two coming. There's no way. Tons. Uh, fucking oh. tons, Jim. Damn, that hurt. Uh random select. I just went with the top one. It's not quite random. Knock knock. Uh you, you know, Eli this Roth. is actually a newer view for me. Um, I only I think the first time I watched this was like three years ago. Really good, dude. Really, really good. I, and and it's not. I, I'm gonna. I want to put it at pretty rad. To me, it's not almost such as the sun. It's a really, really good movie. But I, I feel like. Um, and it's not being insulting to the movie because pretty rad is still high up on the tier list. I just feel like there were some things about it that I didn't like. Um, I think there was. Um, I think that there was parts of that was just forgettable. I, and and overall, the movie. It's hard even for me to to harken back to when I watched it and remember certain scenes that really stood out, except for the hotness of both girls. And that if you were that dude, yeah, you'd sell your soul. So it's fine. Uh, but it's still, I liked it overall. I think it's great. And it also shows the manipulative power of, of these two chicks and what they are able to do against them. So, yeah, it's, it's still it's still a pretty rad movie. Indeed, indeed. I would, uh, and I think we've had this one on here before, I would say. I, I'll i say pretty rad. Strong pretty rad. I, I enjoy watching this movie because there's something about Keanu Reeves in that big-ass house just hanging out by himself and being an architect that's just as interesting as the weird mm. shit that happens afterwards. And like you said, that's a wild situation, and shit gets fucking really crazy in that movie. But uh, I got to get this I, out of my face. Dude. Her body in that thing in a seductive way is really distracting me, and it's making my mm. wiener feel weird. Put a pillow over it. I can't. I don't have one. Put, put uh, by the way, I, 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 that that tagline needs to be on the Vegas thing. <laughs> one night, one night can cost you everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not herpes and golf tricks or betting or child football support. betting. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of situations that can cause that. How about old VHS here? Remember this one, Jay? This one gave Jay a panic attack. I know a vampire was giving a guy head. I passed out. I didn't have a panic attack. I literally fainted. That wasn't a panic attack. I literally fainted. <laughs> I'm not, and then I took his pants off. Uh, yeah, and I felt like my butt feels weird. Is there jelly I'm, on here? Uh, I was like, I, my, I read on WebMDB this is how I'm supposed to wake someone up when they're having a panic attack. Yeah, Mike was. It was Mike's uh, rendition of a turkey baser. So he was checking my temperature. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I, uh, I you don't know, breathe. Movie, three. The, the movie itself, overall, I, I think it was a solid film. But that one with the uh, the female vampire, for whatever reason, the way that they shot it, the way that they filmed it, she freaked me the fuck out. And it, like, I, it scared the shit out of me. Like that bitch gave me nightmares for like a few days, and I literally fainted uh, because of that scene. We, I remember exactly when it happened. Mike, Mike can't come over. This is years ago. Mike came over early in the morning. We were filming and we were upstairs and we were watching the computer, uh, jacking each other off. Filming. And then I was like, I'm not feeling good. Cause I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm gay. And then I'm like, I'm not gay. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, then, and then I was running from it, Steven. Then I went to the bath, but I, I literally went to the bathroom and I started feeling weird. Cause I just seen the scene where she's giving him a blowjob after he falls down the steps in the stairwell and she's giving him a blowjob and it's like the lighting and the way the sound is. And she's like, I like you or whatever, like the way the camera was. And it fucking like, I don't know what it was. It just freaked me out. And I looked in the mirror and I felt like instead of becoming the Hulk, I was like slowly dipping down from this earth. And I felt like I was shrinking and becoming small. And then I was like, I, I stumbled out of the bathroom. Like I was becoming a werewolf and I went down to the, my room. I was like, what's wrong, dude? Are you coming in or not? And watch the rest of it. <laughs> I shit to do. I was like, and, then I was like and, and I collapsed on the bed. He's like, you want to call the ambulance? I'm like, no, dude, because I can't afford it. <laughs> and I, I was like, just, I was like, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. And I, and I like, I finally came too, but it fucking freaked me out, dude. I think it's a fuckable movie overall. Uh, oh man, I, I think I, I would actually call the first one. I would say it's at least pretty rad. The first VHS. Cause you got, you not only had that scene, which was fucked up. That was I'd say the movie makes you pass out. It should earn at least pretty rad. Faint bitch. I ain't gay. Faint pass out, whatever you say. I'll put this one. This is for those of you guys who have not done this with us before. When Jay and I have a disagreement on where to select a movie, that's where you come in and on and on us with your sex parts. Yep. Uh, I'm going to put up a poll in the chat for VHS. Would you call this movie pretty rad or effable, meaning fuckable? I don't know why I said it that way. 
uh, I'd like to apologize for also sleeping with your dad. Okay. Terrence That's in the poll. A great lover, by the way. Yeah, it's it's true. Um, I have many experiences which I give top marks to. Ten, 10 stars on Yelp. How about this old piece of shit right here, Brad and Chucky? They many of you love it. You, Jay and I hate you, it. Yeah, I, I do. I I don't like this movie at all. And the best I'm going to give it, and just for I don't know, maybe nostalgia reasons, and it does have a great soundtrack, and there are some decent funny moments in it. Just for that reason alone, I would put it on fuckable. But it's it's uh, hemorrhoid hangs real close to sucks my butt, Steve. It's just barely <laughs> hanging there. So I'd almost put it in sucks my butt, Steve. But I know that a lot of people love this. A lot of people will put this in yeah. almost such as the sun. Literally, there's people that are, that are worshiping it. I know. I de I definitely put it in fuckable and no no better. And I almost don't like doing that because I'm with you. I almost want to put it in Steve's asshole. But I agree with you. The soundtrack's fun. It has a couple good jokes in it. It's a party. The first. 25% of the movie is actually pretty good, mm -hmm. you know? But after that, it's it's dog shit. Uh, well, they just went off the rails. Nowhere. And I understand why they did it. I, people are like, you don't understand. the." I was like, yeah, I do. Okay, please put the meth amphetamine down. I understand what they were trying to do with the franchise. I just feel like it did. It went off the rails and it became uninteresting to me. When it became like a slapstick, jokey-ass comedy, I, I, I didn't care anymore. I mean, I never liked Chucky to begin with that much. And when it went like that route, I'm like, all right, now it's just goofy. It's just a goofy-ass fucking movie. Yeah, goofy, goofy, uh, leading tower of Chizza. Silver Bullet. I know that we did this one. We did the, silver, the, the Stephen King rankings, but it did release in October. Man, this will be a beautiful movie to watch while the air is crisp in the movie Dude, theater. I, I consider this an essential uh, filming uh, situation for anybody having a, for the, in, in October. The, you have to watch this movie. Silver Bullet to me is almost such as the sun. It's one of the best werewolf movies I've ever seen. That's exactly where I stick it, Jay. That's yeah, stick I it like right stick in there. It stick it in the sun's urethra. What? The, what? Mm -hmm. the Those sun? are where solar flares come from. The sun? Uh, yeah. uh, 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 uh. Almost touches the sun. The stick it in the urethra. Sun. Yes. That, that sun. But what sun were you talking was, about, dirty? You're the one that said it. I was just confused. S-U-N, right? moron. Don't you be like, stupid. First, Jabara's talking about... It. Yeah, he's doing the Matthew McConaughey like every year. The girls keep getting. <laughs> then that guy, you're over here oh yeah, he was out of high school. <laughs> um, just kidding, you Uh, Case Thirty Nine. I don't remember, remember enough. Movie? I don't remember Ooh, enough. I do. I've seen it twice. <laughs> I, saw, I watched it. It was I so intriguing. Watch, like, I watched it two times in a row. Yeah, I watched it like like a year ago. Uh, that looks like kid. your mom, like looking like uh, somehow like looked in on you, like he's a good Christian boy, and then seeing you fap at the fucking anime. For the first no. time, you're like, send him to a fucking home. No, that's just a Karen when the uh, uh, UPS or Amazon guys of color. <laughs> mm. You just put it, don't take it. Now walk away, walk away. I'm going to call the cops. Um, No, Case 39 is a movie where it has one of the fucking most tense openings of a movie of all time. Like if you talk about horror movie openings, I don't know if it's actually in the very opening scene, but like the first act of this has a scene involving a small child in an oven that will have you freaking the fuck out. It's so intense. The rest of the movie doesn't really follow suit that well, but it's a really cool story. And then at the end, they kind of drop the ball a little bit, but still yet fucking intense. And Bradley Cooper's in this, Renee Zellweger's in this, and I like it. I'm going to stick it right in pretty rad. This is where I'm going to stick it. You know where else I'm going to stick it? Hmm? Do you? In an electrical socket. I'm going to stick it in the NES cartridge later when I play Tecmo Super Bowl. <laughs> Bet you Tecmo thought that was going to be dirty, amazing. you fucking perverts. Why don't you just get Pervert? Don't even All use those goddamn words. <laughs> <laughs> I respect women so much I completely stay away from them. Dude, Tecmo Super Bowl is still the greatest football game of all time. Period. I don't want to hear about it. Don't want to talk about it. I mean, I don't want to argue with you. Game. Madden sucks so bad, I would pick pretty much anything. But Super that's Tecmo's good. Point. Hey, this one came out in October. It's old Wes Craven Shocker. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. I, you know, it's a great movie. It's it's fun. It, it like it, it does its own thing. Like it stands apart as a different type of uh, movie from Wes Craven. But ultimately, it's still not like it's not amazing or anything. I don't think it's like anything groundbreaking or ground shattering. I would put this as pretty rad. I have fun watching it. I just don't think it's like any and and the sound the the Shocker song is actually cool. But I feel like what movie did this did it better than this is uh, Fallen with uh, Denzel. That's a fucking Fallen. It's a great movie. Dude, look at his face though. He looks he looks exactly like when you smoke too much pot and you go into a gas station and you're trying to pretend like you aren't high and you're like, <laughs> yeah. 
that's the face I make when I realize that they they uh they put the volcano menu back on Taco Bell and had some. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, where did you that's what that's the face you make when you try to wipe your ass with hemorrhoids. That's exactly the way it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you say you want to stick this one? I put it in a pretty rad. Uh, I I would I would fucking I would normally say fuckable. I'm gonna agree with well, you. No, I know fuck. I don't care. I mean, I, I mean, that's no, fine. I'll, I'll just I'll agree with you. Let's be positive. Let's be positive people in the name of of uh, yeah. But you be positive, one. and then it's called the internet. They're like, what? What a bunch of assholes! I took their recommendations up. I've never been more disappointed than when my mom said she actually wanted me. <laughs> Look, well, because exactly I shouldn't be it... born. Like you know those fucking like those emos. Like my I hate my mom since she born me. I yeah, shouldn't even be yeah. born. Like oh my god, you goddamn <laughs> warlock. Edge Lord, Edge Lord, yeah, alert. you Edge Lord Warlock. Shut the fuck up and go play D and D Fifth Edition. I don't want to got an Edge Lord over. Here. I gotta get some new headphones. These are fucking with my ears so bad. Um, yeah, dude, this I thought I thought this movie was fun. Like you said, it was just a good time. Uh, it just kind of reminds me of like, like you know the funnier parts of like Jason Lives, you know, yeah. with like the Yabang guy and shit like that. Yeah, that's kind of what this movie reminds me of as a whole. So I enjoy it. I, I, it's fun. It's not ever scary, and it's not. It's definitely not one of Wes Craven's best movies. But it's like one of those. Yeah, yeah I'll, fucking, was, I'll watch Shocker. I'll, I'll, yeah, it wasn't I'll, bad. I'll watch yeah, Shocker. It's, it's like uh, the equivalent of, of going to your first haunted house when you're like 15 or something. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's got a neat little storyline too. Even if the effects were fucking balls. Yeah, the effects did suck. Gene mm -hmm. sucks. Uh, I don't know what Gene socks are, but if they made denim socks, socks made I would. Oh wear God, them. this piece of shit. <laughs> oh, here's a nice piece of shit. What are you waiting for? Yeah, let's make a movie November? about let, let's make a movie about a cuck that gets cucked in front of his girlfriend. Let's make a movie about that. That, that sounds like an awesome idea. And you got cucked out by Justin Timberlake lookalike. Holy shit, dude. Ryan Is this, is this a Logan Paul documentary? What's going yeah, on? It here? Sounds like yeah. Because let's just go to the suicide <laughs> force. We're not gonna film anything. Um, I would uh I, I do I'm I'm gonna tell you why, and I know people are gonna get mad about this because some people do enjoy this movie and rank it higher than I ever see. I, I can't understand. I'm going to put it in fuckable. And that's the best you're going to get from me. I don't what like do you... this movie. We, we just we just watched this movie like a year and a half ago or two years ago. Or Patreon. Patreon, and Patreon. And it, but, dude, I, it's so odd. And I know the guy wrote it first. I understand that. But it's so obviously the goddamn uh, Wish.com version of Scream that it's just hard to stomach it and watch it. It's just, it's it's terrible. It's like watching, a, you know, a, a YouTube high school group making a fucking film about scream it, it's awful yeah i i i'll tell you this man i i revered this film I, like look back on it with so much good and happy memories and like man i don't see that so much fucking awesome and then you go back and you actually watch it <laughs> and you're like yeah. this is not as good as i remember like the movie itself is not very good but it's a nostalgia piece i love it for its nostalgia it's got a pretty good soundtrack it's got a pretty weird neat soundtrack i love the cast and I have a good time watching it, but as a movie, it is no better than fuckable. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No fuck. Like everything happens off screen. All right. The 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 villain is boring as shit. Like when it comes out, I am an old guy with a fucking hook. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's got a million problems. I'm sorry, John. After careful consideration, I cannot give my support to open the park. <laughs> <laughs> That's where she goes. She goes in the old fridge pod fuckable category uh how about paranormal activity i mean you gotta give it its due man i mean not since blair witch that has any found footage movie ever came close to what paranormal activity did i mean it, it did it didn't reinvent the genre because in my opinion the one that really broke broke ground and, and became the granddaddy and actually um the innovator of the found footage is blair witch but for me paranormal activity does take it a step further have better lighting better filming better acting to a certain degree uh, with a little bit more action than Blair Witch does, and it has it has a pretty good ending. I would give it almost such as the sun. I think it's a very important movie overall in horror franchise. Damn, we're on fire tonight, son. I agree with you too. I think it's yeah. almost touch as the sun. I think it was. By the way, the picture right there, she's pointing at him to leave, which I'm very familiar with. That's my ex wife telling me, I cheated on you. I want you out of the house. <laughs> Jay's used to women doing this. Yeah. In the and the shadow on the wall is the guy that was dicking her down. That's what it is. <laughs> Waiting to move she in. Was. She was like, actually just pointing to him him to the yeah. door so he knew how to leave. My my divorce was like the sixth day with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I already had a guy ready to replace me right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree with you. It goes and almost touches the sun. I think it's, it's it's again, it's not the greatest movie of all time, but it's no. one of the greatest horror ideas of all time. And it sparked the whole thing. And it's a pretty darn good movie, too. Yeah, so. and the fact that I'm, they did it with like 30 grand or yeah, 25 grand or whatever the fuck it was. 
See, that's what we need to do, dude. That's all we need to do is just think of something like that. We can do it. We can yeah, do it. It's like, let's just film a goddamn, uh, let's just do this Whoa, with a fucking camcorder. <laughs> and then we're going to make millions, dude. Horror like, porn. That's like, yeah, that's like, I was like, that's like something that me and Mike would come up with in 20 minutes drunk and be like, we'll just film like uh, 15 minutes and put it on YouTube. Like paranormal activity. And people are like, this is yeah. great. Like what? It's work. And, and then like, we were... hey, what was the story? It's like, I don't remember. We were drunk. I don't even remember what we were doing. Yeah, that night while we were drunk, we'd be like, dude, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. I know. I love you, dude. I love you too, man. We're gonna do it tomorrow. We're gonna be famous. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna work. It's gonna work. We're gonna be big. And, and, and when they like so a studio offers to buy you, like, I don't remember shit. I don't remember the <laughs> plot. I don't remember what we were thinking at all. Dude, the, the next day, you're just like, no, I don't feel like it. That was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Big Bad Jan. Hey, I don't think I've ever seen that name before. So welcome. Says, hello there, my fellow fudge nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Fudge nuts. Um, can so Lewis I see motivate... that you're a fellow inmate at the state prison. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I remember you from. Can Loomis motivate me to lose weight? Much love, you guys. Me and my cousin Darren love y'all from Scotland. Freedom! Fuck yeah, dude. Scotland, dude. We, I, I don't think we've ever. No, we had one Scot Scottish dude on here before. But um, <laughs> I've slept with a Scottish yeah. man before. Uh, Scottish man. Okay, the big bad Jen. Uh, put down the Hagen Doss. Uh, put down the ice cream. Put down the goddamn uh, soda and the uh, the uh, the wieners. I know you like them in your mouth, but put them down. You don't need them anymore. Uh, go outside, run around. Uh, stop eating, you fat fuck. You're gonna die of diabetes and a heart attack. <laughs> all right. That's all you gotta know. Just look at yourself and say, "Hey, I want to die because I like food, and I want to eat so much that my heart explodes." And says, "Why'd you do this to me?" It's like I like food. I like Big Macs. All right, <laughs> stop eating so much, you fat fuck. End of the motivation. Good luck to you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna fucking get on a treadmill tonight. I mean, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. I'm gonna start calling you, just making you do that to me in the morning. I will also, and I'm gonna secretly jerk off, and you're not gonna know. It's fine. <laughs> Ah, and I'm gonna tell my, my know, dad that I'm secretly jerking off too. <laughs> uh, I'm doing it right so, now, actually. You just oh, can't tell because I'm doing it with my mind. Well, Austin, we're not, says, we're not monetized, so you might as well. Yeah, hey, let's whip it out. Let's let's play swords. <laughs> that's the new uh, that's the new VR. Let's we're gonna play swords in the live stream with our with our wieners. But like, oh, you're making me remember the first time we met at that Motley Crue concert. We played swords. <laughs> it was COVID. It was yeah, a weird, we, we touched tips. It was a weird time for everyone. You tell me, Captain, from the last voyage to the Demeter wouldn't make a perfect Dr. Loomis in a Halloween revival with Halloween Kills flashback Michael Myers. I've heard uh, that a Loomis? lot. Uh, I'll show you who he's talking about here because a lot of people have said this. Is that, is um, that the horror movie that came out uh, recently? <laughs> yeah, about vampires, yeah. The last, uh, is it about the vampires? Dracula the Dracula movie, yeah. Last voyage of the Demeter. Last oh probably. no, April watched that. And I just thought it was some stupid, goofy ass fucking movie, and I didn't want to watch it. I rented it, it for her, and I was like, I didn't want to watch it because I thought it looked, I didn't know what it was about. I thought it was boring as fuck, personally. No, because it, it takes place in the 1800s, doesn't it? Yeah, it's from the book of Dracula. It's from the book oh. when Dracula was on the ship and he killed her. But I thought it was boring, but it was pretty. Uh, some people liked it a lot. But uh, Liam Cunningham is his name, and uh, mm. let me let me Google him and I'll show you guys a picture and, and we'll see what you guys think. Oh, Liam. Uh, dude, I rented that movie for her, and I remember, and she was like, oh, we're going to watch it again? I was like, no. <laughs> and she was like, well, I'm going to watch it again. I'm like, you can watch it again. I'm, I'm glad that you really enjoyed it. And she's like, yeah, but I want to watch it with you. I'm like, I don't want to watch it. Like, I don't know, like, what do you mean? And she's like, yeah, but come on. And I'm like, no, stop. Oh, oh that um, dude. I've seen that dude before. Yeah. Uh, he was in Game I of Thrones. His name. Yeah, I forgot his name in the show. Um, I always called him Westeros. Davos, was it? Davos. Davos, yeah. Maybe. I think it's uh, yeah. yeah, this dude. He's the he's the captain in it, and like he, he I think he has the look of Lewis, and I think um, I mean he I looks just, like I, he looks like a Malcolm McDowell that like slowly drank himself to death. I, <laughs> I, I I mean I'm not like he just looks like a Malcolm McDowell 2.0. I'm not saying he couldn't do it because he is actually a great actor. Don't get me wrong, but I I I I just no, I don't I don't I I stand by my I stand by my decision. I want that dude. From uh, and I, how the fuck am I not thinking of him right now? Uh, Matt Dillon, I want Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon, not Matt Dillon, the guy that looks like Matt Dillon. What the fuck's his name from uh, from Sinister? Oh, Ethan Hawk. Ethan Hawk. I want my <laughs> Ethan Hawk. Matt Dillon. I want my Matt Ethan Hawk that looks slightly like <laughs> Matt Dillon on a bad day. I want my Ethan Hawk as Loomis. As, as now, Ethan Hawk is yeah, yeah. Ethan Hawk could pull it off like this. Like I okay. If so, if you needed someone to pull off like a impersonation of, yeah, of Donald Pleasant, yeah, sure. Yeah. 
But like someone to pull off the nuances and the crazy side of him and like H four and shit, I don't think this is the right guy for it. But I mean, I, I get what you're seeing, Austin. I do. Yeah, I know he looks a lot of like you know, I mean, it. he looks like Malcolm McDowell. But to be fair, I mean, if I were if 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 I could have anybody be Doctor Loomis, if I could go back in time and and make them younger, I would I would cast a hundred percent without a doubt Anthony Hopkins as 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 Loomis. You're talking about the gravity the okay. gravity of the character I mean, and 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 the the acting ability of Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins combined with that character it would be it would be magic. But at the same be. but if you look at Sinister, we talk about this several times. Ethan Hawke's portrayal of like the the the, the writer guy and the way that he's obsessed with these murders that are caught on this and, and he knows there's a supernatural element, there's something weird. He could totally play a young Loomis, like a, or a middle-aged Loomis. I I 100% when I saw him in that movie I was thinking it was like with the, with the cardigan on and the glasses and stuff, I was like, that looks like a young woman yeah. that that just now understanding what Michael is. I think it'd be great. I, I have ideas about who could play Loomis, but honest to God, like I can't think of anybody better than that. So I think Ethan, I, I'm just going to agree with you that it should be fucking Ethan Hawke. Uh, the man who sold the world. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when are y'all going to collaborate with TSL? What Who's is that? TSL? The sack liquors? The sack uh, lickers. I've heard of them. Jesus, they were really popular in prison. Tantalizingly slick labias. The torturous sacks of Landenthal. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I feel the like slut, we the, the, actually TSL stands for the slut luck. That's what people <laughs> pray to in Vegas. The slut luck. <laughs> tootie, uh, tootie, tootie slots from from. I don't know who TSL Libya. is. I will probably be stupid. I really don't know who they are though. But thank you, man. Tartar sauce liquors. <laughs> God, I've seen a few of those, especially old people. <laughs> Fucking tartar. You ever, sauce. you ever been like? And I don't mean. I listen. I, my grandparents raised me, but you ever been out to a restaurant before? And you see old people eating food, and like you get your stomach just kind of like turns inward on itself, and you don't. <laughs> no, you, don't, you sick fuck. No, dude. What's the matter with you? What the fuck you talk about, dude? They you suck the goddamn food up like they're pigs at the trough, and they're like sitting there, and they're like. <laughs> And then, like, you see all the gooey and the juice coming down. And, it, like, and dude, listen, my, my mom, God rest her soul, I, she would eat her food and it would be like, and there'd be like a fucking, like, mayonnaise piece on her lip. And then she'd try to talk to you. And I'm like, God damn it. Wipe your fucking <laughs> mouth. I can't, I can't look at it. And then, and then she, and then they, you see the slurping. And, and then, then they take a drink of a, of a, of a fucking of a iced tea. And then you see chunkables floating at the top of it. And then they eat it while they're drinking it. And, uh, it's just this disgusting. This is all so specific, dude. This is yeah, dude, because so my grandparents raised me, so we went to a lot of old people restaurants. Like, we had a place in, in my, where I live called Kentucky Diner. It was called Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky. C-A-N-T-U-C-K-E-E. -E. Kentucky yeah, Diner. And it was nothing but fucking early bird specials all day long, and you had a bunch of old folk coming up, and I love old folk, but they were like, you look over, and you're like a you know, eight year old, nine year old, and you're seeing like these goddamn Call of Cthulhu like attacks on these like soups and spaghettis. And it's gross, dude. Like it's fucking gross. I, I'm I'm sorry. Anyway, that's why I don't know where I was going off. I, I totally <laughs> forgot why I went off. On that's my like, hey, uh, where do you guys rank VHS? And Jay's like, you ever see old people fucking eat? I, I like I like I the fresh them in the hey, You never know when we're gonna shift into sixth gear. <laughs> hey, get in <laughs> shift into turbo power rangers. <laughs> I fucking, there are certain things though like there's certain things that like some will just be completely innocent. by the way i will and, say before you get on your point i love i love old folk okay i was again <laughs> i was raised by my grandparents i have nothing but respect and love for them and if i weren't doing this maybe i'd go i wouldn't do that i was gonna say maybe i'd go and volunteer don't go too at far a, at a nursing home yeah, i would never do don't that. go don't say I, shit. I, yeah i'm not i'm not obama <laughs> running for presidency or anything like that i'm not gonna lie to you and tell you shit but uh anyway I'm, uh but i love old folk i don't want people to get the wrong impression yeah, uh, I, I'll tell you what, I, I think that there are certain things people like someone you could love more than anybody on the earth and you're just sitting next to them. And, you know, maybe you think the world of them, maybe they're, you think their poop is glitter and sparkles, mm. but they take a bite of burrito and you just see <laughs> are they like, Elton John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just see some fucking shit like just one little thing. And I do it. I do it to my wife all the fucking time. I always get yelled at because I'll just be eating just like little in my own world. She's like. Are you eating a it's fucking disgusting. pool? Like, why is it so wet sounding? Like, what the fuck is going on over there? Yeah. There's certain mouth noises you never forget. Like, my sister, when she would eat a sandwich, she would take a bite and she would go. She's practicing for the big game after prom. I swear <laughs> to God, I fucking lost a year <laughs> in my life hearing that noise. Uh. No, dude, I, my, uh, my, my uh, grandfather, or, you know, I call him Big Dad. You know, he's the guy that raised me. Uh, he, uh, 
dude. Like, it's so, like, I hate when he eats tomato sandwiches. Like, he loves tomato <laughs> sandwiches. And if you guys don't know what tato, tomato sandwiches are, it's basically a slice of tomato on white bread with mayonnaise. And that's all it is. And he loves tomatoes. And he loves tomato sandwiches. And the other day, I was talking to him, and he was eating it. And then I hate when I get into a discussion where I know he has to respond back right away because I'm, I'm, I'm it's not like a rhetorical question, so he's going to answer it. And he, I was, I asked him about something. He was like, "Well, and, and like there was like, it, it looked like a battlefield of just like debris on his lower lip, and he has a big <laughs> lower lip, so it like caught everything, like a net of like fish. It was all like fucking chunkables, <laughs> and there was a piece of like mayonnaise like like hanging down, and he didn't notice. And I was like, and I was like, Dad, wipe your fucking lip. <laughs> and he's like, God damn it. That's like, there's like, God damn it. Like, he gets mad. I'm like, it's not my fault that your lip is acting like a goddamn light source for mosquitoes, which in this case are bugs to attract it to. Like, <laughs> just fucking eat normal. Like, chew your food. That's it. I don't understand how it's hard. But anyway, <laughs> I, you know, that's just my opinion. Anyhow, old people burning, old people burning. Put your hands up. <laughs> That's kind of messed up. Okay, let's jump back into the listicles for a second here. After that ABC, the more you know moment. <laughs> yeah, after every talk about we <laughs> want to murder a old people because for just eating their food. <laughs> uh, I am going to fucking throw this one out there, even though I know that we've ranked it before. I can't remember where we stuck it. All right. right. <clears throat> With Halloween kills. So I'm going to catch, I mean, I, like, I didn't catch a lot of shit for this, but I know that there was a, this is, considered a very divisive movie amongst Halloween fans. I don't, I, I kind of get why, uh, but ultimately, I think that what they did with Tommy was atrocious. I think the acting was absolutely awful and it's not his fault. It was the writing that made that uh, character so badly um, consumed by the public. I, but everything else about this, this, this movie, I love, I love this movie. I, I, I actually do enjoy Michael Myers in this movie. Um, this is just an unleashed Michael. This is a Michael that, doesn't give a fuck. The fireman scene obviously was spoiled by the trailers, but it still lives up to the hype when you see it in the theater. There's a lot of cool things about this movie that I enjoy. <clears throat> I put this at pretty rad just to avoid the goddamn arrows that people are going to launch if you put it in. Fuck them arrows. You say what you mean and you fucking mean. No, I don't think I'll come over there and I'll fair, suck I your what? I don't feel like it, it it touches the sun, but I definitely feel like it's pretty rad. There's a lot of people out there that would have put it in sucks my butt, Steve, which I, I think that's stupid. That's moronic. But, um, because I mean, you're talking about sucks my butt, Steve. Is like reserved for things like Rob Zombie's Halloween Two or or Resurrection, and people would people would literally put this movie in that category, which is all kinds of stupid. But I think it's pretty rad, and I feel like it almost touches the sun, but it it, it is ultimately pretty rad. I'm stuck, like I'm stuck in my brain in between right now, honest to God, because like I love the movie. It's got a million fucking problems. It really mm -hmm. does. What they got right was Michael Myers and the slaughtering and the killing that was, and the yeah. sucking and the fucking. They got all that right, but that weird shit. And you saw David Gordon Green definitely has a problem with doing this, where he just like he's like, I don't really care about Buzz right now. I want to play with Woody, even though like he promised yeah. us he would show us Buzz like for a fucking. Uh, and Woody's my favorite, so let's just get that straight right now. But Wood. no, like yeah, when he. <laughs> Follows, decides to follow Tivoli around for this plot thread that goes fucking nowhere for half the movie. And then you got Evil Dies Tonight going on in an awful, awful dialogue. And they gave bad. Scott Teams a job to write one of the biggest fucking horror movies in the last 10 years, even though he'd only fucking ever written like a goddamn brochure for Microsoft Word. I don't know why they chose that decision, but I still love the fuck out of the movie. I'm too torn to make a decision. And it's about time we put up a vote anyway. And this yeah. is so divisive, like you said. Uh, so I say we put it to a vote and just see where you guys want to stick it tonight. But I could go either almost touches the sun. I wouldn't fight you too hard on pretty rad, but I can't make a decision because I'm gay. VHS. In the case of Just because you're gay doesn't mean you can't make a decision, Mike. God damn. I can't make well, I guess that makes me buy, right? You're bi. <laughs> Idiot. Zing zing. Zing 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 zing. Zing zing. No, actually, uh, yeah, Halloween Kills is one of those movies that I, it is weird how it it came out. It was it was like the same kind of uh lightning bolt that separated fans of when uh when BVS came out. It kind of had the yeah. same effect. Which is weird because we I understand why BVS had some hate. I understand some of it. I don't understand all of it. Just like it was the same boat. I was like, Halloween Kills was pretty fucking cool, man. Like if you forget about some of the bad acting and some of the, the plot lines that really went nowhere and the subplots that were stupid, you got to see an Unleashed Michael, which you really hadn't seen since Curse of Michael. And I thought that was fucking awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. Like, I think that there's so much in this movie that once the expectations go away, people are going to go back and look at Pawn Halloween Kills and they're going to be like, fuck, there was some some of the best Michael we've ever had in the so. franchise. Yep. There was no doubt in that movie. So let's put it to a vote, see what you guys think about it. Uh, in the meantime, VHS scored a pretty rad. 56% said VHS was pretty rad. 44% said it was fuckable. Um, so we're going to stick VHS right in my AS. I think that I think that right I, I don't I know I don't know 100% but I I think the the sequels were more like I think they continuously got worse. Uh, no 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 the actually like the last you lie! they put out. No the last couple were pretty good. I don't think no, you I'm watched not, them. I'm not, I'm talking about the second one though. I thought the sequel sucked. Or somebody said it was, I don't know. I didn't watch it after the first one. Fucked me up. I didn't watch it anymore. VHS two was good. It was almost as good as the first one. Uh, VHS three, I, I, if I remember correctly, was not great. And that kind of was kind of, you know, but well, you uh, know, what's not great. I have to go pee or my wiener head's going to burst. Do so it, I have to go do now. It. I have to go now. Don't forget to film good, though, the man. after show we're video even, for Patreon. We're, we're not even a full hour in and we've done pretty well with our list. It looks pretty good. I like this. I feel feel like we're, we're we're on a good pace By we way, we're on a good pace i was gonna ask you do you have any more of those uh do you have any marvel masterpieces uh from the you know those marvel masterpiece cards from 1994 do you have any uh no but they're worth a fuck ton fuck yeah dude i was like yeah. we had a bunch of them when we were kids i remember we had like sleeves of them and they're worth like i saw that the other day like those are valuable ass cards they are, dude, and it pisses me off because I had the whole collection and I had a whole fucking book full of them, and I, I I got dragged to a fucking horse show with my mom and my sister. They went to all of them. I didn't do the thing, but I always had to hang out for hours at these fucking shit smelling horse shows. And I left it. I left my whole binder of Marvel masterpieces on a park bench, and some kid fucking stole it. You know what it was? It was your future self going back in time with the DeLorean and stole it from you. I wish I fucking could. <laughs> hey, I would happened. steal the shit out of that. God damn it! All right, I'll be all right. right. Enjoy your tinkle time. Don't forget to film I it for Patreon. He noticed he never he never said he wasn't going to film it for Patreon. So you Patreons might have a, a nice video of just Jay taking a big steamy pee. <laughs> oh, I'm looking here for a movie that Jay has not seen while he is gone. Um, and most of these October releases are ones that we've done on the channel or whatnot. So most of these he has. I'm checking. I'm looking. I'm thinking fuck i think we actually we both seen all these we might be good on that level oh me no i think we're actually most of these we've seen at least i'm not 100 percent sure he has not seen them so i'll actually just wait and i'll answer some of your fucking at least you got a little preview of all the movies we're gonna be talking about here you pieces of shit you big old pieces of shit adrian said i will fucking have jay read that when he gets back white devil said it's me gary <laughs> it's me gary i changed my name to troll all the racists that think all white people are the devil but now youtube said i'm stuck with this fucking name for 13 days <laughs> well white devil for those who think that all white people are the devil white devil i don't know what to do with that i don't know what to do with that white devil but no, your next name should be quincy ocho <laughs> Truck and inspired just has a nice fucking hat. And that's just the fact. It's just a nice hat. He also says, Where are the bodies, Garth? Where are the bodies, Garth? <laughs> Fuck, I just want to watch Wayne's World now. Why would you do this to me, senorita? You filthy animal. Thanks so much. Says, uh, <laughs> What the fuck is that picture, dude? Is that. What's going on in the middle of it? Like. There's like a darkness in the tummy area and there's like a tail and there's hair. It's like a poopy brown. I hope that's not something else. I feel like Matt Broderick and Cable Center sit nipple porno password i've been a whore fan since i was five when my aunt took me with her to watch phantasm in 79. always appreciate knowledgeable funny whore buffs your views opinions and skits you two are great thanks man or woman or animal we really appreciate that and dude the first horror movie you see to be with a family member seeing phantasm that's pretty fucking rad phantasm would be an awesome first horror movie to see you were probably disappointed in everything you watched afterward because nothing goes as hard as phantasm not on like fear but as far as like 
we're fucking wild, dude. Like, Phantasm's a fucking riot. So going to see that as your first ever movie with all that weird ass shit happening in it, that'd be a trip. They don't come any more original than fucking Phantasm. They certainly do not. Mike Barton, thanks, buddy, says Mortal Kombat 2021 was okay. I thought the acting was a bit hammy. And I will run these by Jay as well because he's the one that played Mortal Kombat, not I. Not I. I don't know. I can't do it. Like fucking Mortal Kombat, dude. I lost interest around like Mortal Kombat 3 when they brought out the Game Genie and everybody. I went over to this kid's house and they had like all the combos and like the fucking books and the goddamn walkthroughs. And I'm like, dude, I just want to smash buttons and fuck people up. You're doing all this shit. I can't keep up with it. I don't know the fucking buttons. It's like your grandpa playing a video game. I don't see any point. And then also you can still whoop someone's ass just by fucking, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I don't really play him much. And White Devil also says, I remember watching VHS. I had my dick in my hand getting ready to or dad getting ready. To, and then the movie got wild and my dad went all up into my fucking chest. VHS. I'm just hang on. I gotta I gotta run this one through the old connected dots. You're about to watch VHS. Take in your hand. The movie got wild. Your dick went up. Here. Okay, so it sucked in. It sucked inward is what you're trying to say. Huh. I knew a guy who had one of those. He used to show it to us. Be like, hey, you guys know I have one of those inward dicks? And we're like, yeah, dude, we know. It's fucking weird. Please stop. And he's like, I want to show it to you. And we're like, show it to us. And there's always one guy who's like, oh, my fucking God. And we're like, yeah, he's got an inward dick. It's weird. You can only eat, you know, food off of it so many times before it's not that strange anymore. I'm so I'm sometimes you just say something. You're just ashamed of yourselves. What the fuck is going on right now? Uh, the violent, the violator 862 says it's been a while since I've had some wham up in me. But hey, I'm back for more. They've been asking me if I'm back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. They killed my dog. <laughs> I killed my dog. But he was like, I'm only back because I killed my dog, you asshole. <laughs> hey, Michael Parton said that he did not like Mortal Kombat 2021 because he thought the acting was hammy. I told him I would tell yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. He thought I can it was see hammy that. as well. I, I can see that. It looks so good in the trailers, though. Um, and also, Filthy Animal. Dude, what is that picture? Tell me it's not as nefarious as it fucking looks. Like, it looks like there's like a, either a poo center or like a hair center. Dude, that I it literally, it looked like like they shit and they're holding in their hands. Like, would you like to have some supper? Yeah, I, I just hope that's not a crotch. It's the new logo for Kevin Smith Studios. <laughs> what was What's that your... thing? You, what was that thing where he had like the clown? And uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about? The view askew. The view askew. It was like the dirty old clown with a with an unshaven face that walks in. It kind of looks like. Oh that. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's got me got me weirded out. But it was a very nice comment. We appreciate you, filthy animal. I really, really hope that picture's Thanks, not man. as dirty as it appreciate seems. You. But we do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Jay. What? Do me on a mountain. Okay. Let's get there. <laughs> and make sure that you bring our Ricola fucking uh, pipes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rainbow over there. Do me on it. Um, I am at 8.40 p.m. And I will be right back. All right. All right. 840. I right. you got it. I'm gonna go draw a picture of you naked. I can't wait. And I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it on WW. Who you at? Who, 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 who's the person? Jay uh, the vile. Oh no, I just read that one. Okay. I'm actually so, all caught up. No, I'm not. We're all caught up. No. Austin, 846 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. Okay. 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 See you. Okay. Bye. Bye. I'll see you soon. I'll see you. Oh, we got a cross up situation. Okay, Austin, thanks, man. Uh, so we need a good Jersey Devil movie with practical effects that feel like Pumpkinhead. Yeah, dude, that'd be cool as fuck. I don't really, I'm not, like, I'm sort of kind of familiar with the uh, with the legend of the Jersey Devil, but I'm not that caught up on it or, the, or that knowledgeable. But anything with with that kind of lore and having the Stan Winston effects that, that, were, that were, obviously he was the one that directed the movie for Pumpkinhead, I'm down for it. Uh, I really wish, uh, man, I don't know. Does... Does Pumpkinhead, I mean, would you trust it to be remade today? I just don't know. I don't know if they would do the practical effects for it to make it like, you know, the legendary movie that it is. Or if they would just do the cheap thing and do special effects to make it corny. I don't know. But yeah, dude, I, I'm down for that. That would be a great idea. Thank you, Austin. 
Uh, Mud Nelson uh, says, uh, I need some Mark Wahlberg in my life. I will tell Mike that for you. I will tell you that, Mud. You uh, keep your profile picture. You keep on uh, you keep on keeping on in that uh, witness protection program. You're all blacked out there, dude. I can't see you, but I will tell Mike. 847 Mud Nelson. Got you, dude. Uh, Derek, thank you, man. Says, worst part of Matrix sequels, Jada Pinkett. She's not human. Yes. Uh, worst part of Will Smith's life, Jada Pinkett. So I agree. Yes, it, it all ties together. She's the worst part of the Matrix sequels, and she's also the worst part of Will Smith's life, who almost was Neo in the Matrix movies. Strange. But yeah, I I, I never, I never, to me, to, to be honest with you, I never thought Jada Pinkett was that great of an actress, to be fair. Uh, and, and I especially didn't, I never liked her character in um, the Matrix. I I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't know if I just, she just felt like, when she, when her character's introduced, I think it's reloaded. Uh, she just seems so shoehorned in. It just doesn't feel like a natural evolution of a plot. It just feels like she's shoehorned in to be the the uh, like the female, not well, kind of like the female Neo in a way. I don't know. I just I never really liked her. But yeah, I get what you're saying, dude. She was pretty bad in that. I never really cared for Jada Pinkett in the Matrix uh, sequels. And and God knows, the Matrix movies uh, did not need any help sucking. The the last one was oh my god. Anyway, uh, Landon. Eckhart, thank you, dude, says, uh, first month of law school down. Good job, dude. Uh, love kicking off my birthday week with you guys. Binge, binging scream and saw all week, baby. And I know that you're trying to say, all week, baby, because he has all caps with exclamation points. So he's screaming this. Don't scream, Landon. But I'm happy that you're doing very well in your law school uh, situation and that you're you're enjoying the scream and saw situations good for you i can't go through the saw again uh mike's i think mike's reviewing all the all the saw movies leading up to saw uh was it saw 10 saw x i don't know um i just watched them all i can't go through it again but good for you landon i'm not, i'm glad you're having a good time dude stay hydrated uh jacob oh thanks dude says sup y'all or sup guys hope all is well and i love you guys a lot uh mike I'm going to, okay, so I'll, I'll remember this. Mike, I wanted to ask this a couple of streams ago, but what is, okay, so I'll, I'll let, I'll let him answer that, Jacob, but wow, man, thank you so much, dude. Um, So it's Jacob at 901, and we've got uh, Mud at 847, 847, I'm not going to remember that, but I'm going to try to, and I, oh, uh, oh, Jacob again, oh, uh, plus one more time, got me all choked up at work. And Tully wasn't expecting more than you know. Both songs slept with me. Okay, so that's good. A follow up question. Okay, I'm gonna say we didn't get you choked up. I did not do anything, Jacob. Uh, John Horside, what's up, guys? You and Jay seen the new Godzilla minus one trailer? I don't. We watched the new. We watched one of the Godzilla movies, uh, or not movies, uh, trailers. Recent, uh, the last stream. I don't know if it was minus one though. I've heard a lot about that one though. A lot of people seem that that's actually pretty good. Uh. Trucking inspired, fuck yeah, dude. Cabela's, goddamn, you can get everything there, everything you could ever imagine. All the hunting equipment, all the camo, the tackle boxes. Cabela's, trucking inspired, bro. Let's fight. I just watched Child's Play series, and the first two are trash. Bride of Chucky is the best. Now, I ain't gonna fight you, trucking, right? You don't come on here and challenge to a fight. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? How much were you drinking? No, uh, listen, there's a lot of people that do like Bride of Chucky, to be fair. But you didn't like the first two, and then you like this. Well, I guess that seems fair. I mean, there are, like, I, I think in Child's, the, for me, the first one is, is good. And the second one, third one, it's kind of like, okay, it's getting boring now, repetitive. And then the fourth one was such a divergent from what they were trying to establish in the first three movies. And it was pretty much, it, not a soft reboot. But it kind of felt in that way a soft reboot with the introduction of Tiffany and the whole the plot line doing its own thing, different from the first three. But yeah, I mean, so it was I can understand the appeal. So it was like a very different movie. It was like a different origin story in a way. But yeah, that's cool, man. I ain't gonna fight. It's all right. Joe Valentine, thanks, man. Says Loomis, tell my sons to shape up and start listening. You better shape up. Because you need a job. If you don't, you'll be on government cheese. You better shape up. You're going to be in jail. 
on your knees with crack methamphetamine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you got two questions for you uh, regarding, uh, there was a Mark Wahlberg thing. I think it was uh, Mud at 847. Uh, I will find it. I will find it. Yeah, I think it's 847 Mud, and then there was another one from Jet Up at uh, 901. Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you about something I wanted to talk about. I went with my family today. We went to this thing called a midnight festival. It's a fall festival and you go there with your family and everybody's selling all these little trinkets and stuff. But there was this guy looking at me weird and I followed him around the corner. He had a 12 pack of Bush Light. So you know what I did, right? I walked up to him and I said, hi, my name's Mark Wahlberg. How's your mother? And then he told me he, saw, he liked my movie, The Fighter. And I told him I went head body, head body on Saul Mamby. And then I went head body, head body on him and I took his fucking Bush Light and I took it back to my gym and I didn't drink any of it because I got a movie coming out and I got to get a fucking 12 pack of fucking abs and I got to eat a fucking turkey burger. How's your mother? And then, and then, I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> I got fucking... No, I, I'm, I'm letting... Uh, what What do the kids say now? I'm letting him cook. Let him cook, <laughs> brah. Let, Let him, him cook, cook. brah. That was fucking terrible. I'm sorry. I got I got a recent... I, I don't, know I don't feel I, right tonight. I was going... I, I was like, right. where's the story going to end? I want to know. <laughs> I got to fucking... I got to have some coffee or something. Derek says... Oh, you already read some of these. Yeah, you're uh, right. No, you're I mean? not a one. I'm not fucking in it right now. I need to fucking recenter my brain dude i'm not my brain's gone i'm not fucking well i'm sorry that we're not important enough for you go i'm fuck trying yourself, san diego i'm fucking trying not a okay? one is where you're at jet pump scramby eggs oh you oh. still like roger rabbit crying about jessica rabbit not being with him anymore <laughs> <laughs> I uh, body cake. dude jacob fucking yeah did you jay tell no, me no you dude you're the wrong 901 did I go That's faster? The, yeah, you're. Yeah, uh, Jacob dropped a big old fifty bomb. It's Fuck right shit. There. Fuck. It's right there See, in pink. Dude. I'm sorry, you guys. Hang on. I need to fucking. Yeah. It's, yeah. <sighs> Spit the dicks out and let's get with it. I... You cannot I... get katana sword by stealing. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask this a couple streams ago, but what are both your favorite and least favorite album from each of these bands? Blink-182, Green Day, and Alkaline. Oh, yeah, I, I do, Jacob, honestly, I would have answered your question. I thought you were asking it directly to Mike because I saw the Blink-182 thing in there, so I was like, oh, it's not my forte. Um, Dude, fucking man. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a crazy... I just put on Patreon, by the way. I did a whole fucking tier list of all the Blink albums. I figured that you probably didn't want to do that one. <laughs> I didn't do it live. Well, I don't, I, know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about... like. I know uh, Savage Garden's affirmation, and then uh, the, the <laughs> other one uh, that they did their first one. I, as far I don't, yeah, I couldn't do it. Uh, I can tell you my favorite. I can tell you my favorite songs from each of the. I don't know about Alkaline Trio. I don't know shit about any of that. I mean, I, Alkaline to me is just a battery. I was like, oh, it's made with Alkaline. I like it. It's going to be solid. Uh, so I don't know anything about Alkaline Trio. I've never, I don't even think I've ever heard a song from them. I might have, but I don't remember it. But Blink-182, I think the, the best um, song I've ever heard from them that I, I think is fucking great, and I've always thought it was great, was Damn It. I think Damn It is probably their best song they've ever put out. I, I love that song. It always makes you feel good. It doesn't feel old or reused. Every time I hear it, I think it's a good song. And then uh, Green Day is... Uh, is uh, it's Because everybody would say Time of Your Life, but it's not that one, because that one was... Oh, like that real green was, day fans wouldn't say that well I it's promise. oversaturated i just feel like it was on the on the thing on the radio too much and it became too many too many shows used it i liked um when i come around i think that to me green That's day awesome. when i come around is like the quintessential green day and that makes me feel all the happy and the gooeys inside yeah. I'm like oh i remember those days when i was young listening to those kind of, that's what it is when i come around yeah, that's a great one. You know how fucking emo I was in high school? I had a folder and I had that 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 uh, quote written on it. It was like, "I'm a user and a loser, so I don't need no." User. Was that was that next to was your uh, was that wait next to your makeup kit with the black lipstick <laughs> and the eyeliner? <laughs> yeah, it was that my fuck you flip flops. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Blink One Eight Two favorite song of all time. It's impossible and it's ever fucking changing. That's for sure. Um, no, but I will go. You want your albums? I just did the songs because oh, I don't know the album. Oh, he said album. Okay. Uh, favorite favorite Blink album of all time is probably going to be I Gotta Go with Enema of the State, even though it's kind of chalk. It's like the happiest, most Blink fucking record of all time. So I will go Enema of the State. Worst record from Blink is probably going to be 
uh, I'll say Buddha, their very first one, because they just didn't have it yet. A couple great songs they took from that and put on Dude Ranch, which were sure classic songs, but of all of them, I'd have to say that's my least favorite. Um, but if you're on the Patreon, I did a fucking 45 minute video about those albums. But um, Green God Day, damn, favorite... son, were you drunk? <laughs> no, I was just into it. I, dude, those new Blink songs came out. I know, I, was... I heard, I know. You know that, oh that new God. Blink one, that, that new Blink one, song, uh, 182 song is trending on YouTube. Fuck yeah, it is, and it should be. I think it's going to be a huge hit, man. The song made me cry my fucking eyes out. I actually like had to watch it alone so I could be emotional with it and like have my fucking time alone with it before I would watch it with my wife and kids. Because no, my, and my like, wife's like, look at you. Is he crying? I'm like, no, I'm not fucking crying. You're I thought you were like Gary Busey, drunk at the hotel. And you're like, <laughs> and listen to these songs. Like, I'm going to make a 45 minute video. For God's <laughs> sake, stop the ship. <laughs> yes. You got this, bastard. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Favorite Green Day album, I, 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 you know, I have to go with fucking Dookie, no matter what. It's American Idiot's close though. Least favorite Green Day album would probably be the, uh, God, they got a couple bad ones. They really do have a couple bad albums. There's no doubt about that. I'll go with the most recent one, Father of All Motherfuckers. It went this weird like '70s fuzz thing. I just didn't dig the sound of it. It was fucking that was strange. The name of their album. No, no, no. The, 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 it just it. He was trying to do this weird like seventies club shit, and it just no, didn't. Father of all motherfuckers was the name yeah. of their album, which oh, I think it's great God. name. I think it's a great album name actually. But we have followed because um, my lad, we are pilgrims in an unholy land. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my favorite uh, Alkaline Trio album is God Damn It. It's 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 fucking amazing. I love that album so much. And least favorite album I'd have to probably say is My Shame Is True. Um, Shame is I, true. My shame is true. Even oh, though my shame is really good song. I, I thought it was shame is true. I was like, was it in regards <laughs> to the Irishman? Shame is true. Uh, there's still really good songs on it, though. I will say. Jacob also says. Plus, yeah. one more time, got me all choked up at work. Totally wasn't expect that. More than you know, both songs slapped all the ass. Love squirts. Um, dude, did you? Did, so, did you listen to the songs? Mm. Fucking do it, Jake. I'm getting sober. Fucking listen. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't want to know because if I listen to it and suppressing, I'm gonna drink. <laughs> well one more time uh is very fucking depressing but it's also like really touching like it's more touching than it is depressing but it's also depressing yeah. my favorite of the two is actually more than you know because it is dude i think it's the hardest blink has ever written a song like travis uses the speed pedal and that chorus is so fucking gnarly man the song the lyrics are fucking amazing the song's amazing it actually sounds like something that you would have gotten had they not broken up and done an album right after neighborhoods and dogs eating dogs uh, or right in the untitled era like it's a fucking it's exactly what Blink should be today. It's fucking perfect, and it's punk as shit, and I love it. Uh, it's amazing. I love it so much. You Go know what's punk when you when you like uh, when you like in sync? Yeah, that's, that's actually is punk because you that's know what? I don't care what you think about bitch. Me. Yeah, I, I don't care. care. What you got me I'll pull up next to you at a red light and pop in my cassette tape of tearing up my heart and blast it out the windows. <laughs> I don't care. I'll drown you out. Ready to go? I Ready to race? I actually thought about you tonight, Jacob, too. I was like, I know people are going to be talking about that Blink thing. And I, if I do, that album's going to be so good. 17 tracks comes out October 20th, two days before we go to Scarefest. I'm going to be riding a fucking Blink high. It's going to be great. I'm going to make you listen to it all, Jay. I'm going to play it in the fucking booth with a Bluetooth we'll speaker while I'm fingering your butt under the table while we're well, signing on. The fingering the butt under the table is a given, but I'll be listening to Don't Need Nothing But a Good <laughs> Time. And it don't get better than Greg <laughs> inside my ass. Uh, uh, okay, do uh, that, that, that. <laughs> do that. Like I always think about when I think of poison. I uh, don't need nothing but a good time. I think of the movie Grind with Sweet Lou when they're yeah. driving and he's listening. He goes, ah, like he's he's lip syncing. He's like, ah. he goes, <laughs> now listen. <laughs> yeah, now listen. That was fucking great. Uh, all right, let's jump back into the list because I know we've been pooping nanny in for a little bit, uh, and we'll jump right back into your super chats here in just a moment. In just a moment, come on, come on, touch this list with wake us. up number 57. Wake up <laughs> or it's 37. I don't remember in Mothman. Uh, don't you have some? I, I can't, I can't, I can't say anything. I've not seen it. I've still not seen Happy Death Day. You should watch it. It's actually nah. okay. <laughs> I'll say this. I fucking, I, there's two movies. There's two genres, sub genres of movies. I don't really get into one of them's time travel. The other is groundhog day movies. Uh, they just get all my fucking nerves. You know, I don't know why, but the whole thing about the, the plot always comes back to that center point. I get why it's right. interesting, but for me, it just gets on my goddamn nerves. It feels like a dream. You can't so wake you don't up like from. back to the future. You piece of shit. I like, I, no, I don't, I don't hate all time travel movies. You fucking Twitter. User. And the jacket. I'm just saying, I, if I had a Twitter, then your goddamn insult would be relevant. 
<laughs> that is Twitter, though, right? You're like, I really love basketball, and someone's like, so you fucking hate football? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that is true. It doesn't matter. Uh, like, I really love my wife. Oh, so you ate all the women? You fucking misogynist? <laughs> like, what? That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> what? Uh, but I'll say, happy death date. By the way, the director of this is directing the new Scream movie coming out, Michael Landon. Uh, I For me, it is... God, this is tough because I, I kind of want to sort of. Don't get, I'm nuts, put it in don't get nuts with it. Don't get Michael. I'm Keaton. put it. I'm put it in fuckable. I think it's a little better in fuckable. It could be in pretty rad, but uh, just for my I personal been, taste. I, been fine with that. I, I thought you were trying to almost touch it the sun. I'm like, dude, I I've never seen this movie, but I guarantee you it's probably not that good. It's 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 a fun little movie. I like it. It's got a lot of screams type stuff in it, so I enjoy it for that. I love that lead actress is great in the movie. Just that's the whole thing just gets on my nerves. The whole. Yeah. Groundhog Day thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take Saw out of this for right now because we're gonna do a whole Saw tier ranking. But like all the Saw movies came out in October, and uh, we're gonna do a new tier ranking for that after it comes out. So I'll take the Saws out of this for right now. I ain't doing uh, that. I ain't seen them. Fuck it. You've seen all the movies, Jay. I'm you just have to watch that. the new one. <laughs> no, motherfucker. No. Father of all motherfuckers. <laughs> they called me um, uh, Beyonce Bob. <laughs> <laughs> here's a michael landon film the guy who's directing the new screen movie as well i, I have not movie, seen dude. this one. Oh my god dude though you're bitching at me for not yeah. seeing happy death day you've not seen this one this is a must see movie this is like the rated r version of the goonies and monster squad i fucking love it dude i would put this as almost such as the sun like that's how far up i think this is i, I you know but that's where i feel that it should go, but facts don't care about your feelings, Ben Shapiro says on Twitter. So I'm going to be a little smarter with it and say I think this should go to a vote. I'm kind of torn between Pretty Rad and Almost Touches the Sun. To be honest with you, I think it's a great movie. It's un underrated. A lot of people don't like. I again, if you grew up with movies like Monster Squad and and, and Goonies, and you're like, what would happen if these kids were in like a, a a remake where it was like more rated R, and what would happen? look no further than scout's guide to the zombie apocalypse it's funny as fuck dude i laugh my ass off there's one scene uh where <laughs> where he grabs the guy's like the zombie's dick and he's like dude i can't i can't uh go into too much detail because it would ruin the, the joke but uh i i want to put this to a, a vote i i just want to see it's either a pretty rad or almost touches the sun okay We'll stick that in a vote, and that makes means that we have to go back and check out Halloween Kills. Ooh, it's tight. It's tight like a toyga. Halloween Ooh. Kills, you guys say, almost touches the sun. 38%, wow. 37% said pretty rad. 25% said fuckable. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a movie that's all over the place Whoa. for people. But today, it goes to almost touches the sun. Yeah. There stick you go. her in, Steve. And that's what we'll do. And I'll put in the vote for the other one as well. Um, uh, All those right guys now. that said it was that high on the list are Blumhouse employees. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Bought and paid for. Uh, I, I think that, well, that, by the way, that happens all the time. If we give a movie that everyone universally seems to hate in the community, oh, how much they pay you? How much they pay you? <laughs> like, Which is funny because Rotten Tomatoes actually got caught. I, heard, I know. People I, I heard about that. Yeah, people were paying Rotten Tomatoes critics to, mm -hmm. to give movies good reviews, and this guy did this whole deep dive into not only that, but how the system, the whole system's kind of broken, and how yeah. bad it actually is for movies. Nobody fucking cared. It's no, like Chris it's, Brown. Well, it's not. Like, it's nobody not, cares. It's not just movies. It's video games too. It's the yeah, same thing. Yeah. It's across the fucking board. Yeah, and like that story just me, went like a fart trust tonight. Me, if me and Mike were offered a big fat check to betray your trust and tell you bullshit, I'd love to do it. But they don't trust us at all to fucking not stay sober and stick to the script. And they're right. <laughs> so I'd be like, man, I played this game. It fucking sucked. I'm like Mike, like, dude, you just fucking ruined it. Like, they oh, gave yeah. us, they gave, they, they sent us a fucking, fucking lifetime supply of Twizzlers. We can't deny that. No, we true. have to do it. Uh, yeah, it's, I think that shit's crazy. But you know what? The internet didn't care. It's just like when people put out these fake ass update videos about shit with like scream and stuff that's not actually happening. That's just they just made up. No one cares. They're like, you're the fucking best, dude. Thanks well, for the fake news. It's not <laughs> like, like, and like, what I, like what we don't have any, I don't have any problem with anybody hustling to get some money. But like, if you're like, I, I feel like at some point your integrity is on the line at, at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, you can make videos and lie your ass off. To fucking sell a product that's bullshit and you'll get money for it but at the same how exhausting must you feel 
You know yeah. what I mean? How exhausting because you got you're you're basically you're you're whoring yourself out to these goddamn corporations that don't give a fuck about you and they're using your influence as a way to make their shitty product more accessible to fans that don't know any better. And I, I mean you got to be exhausted when you turn the camera off. You're like, "Fuck, dude. I can't even have fun and make a video that I enjoy because I have to lie. My titties off." Anyway. Yeah, we joke, but I couldn't fucking do it, man. And they weren't even like I can't. A lot it's of too money. exhausting. It's like, too fucking exhausting. They were offering like I think it was like fifty bucks, like a gift card to fucking rallies or some shit. That these people were like doing fake reviews for shit. So- it was like all lower tier movies, but like <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's wild, dude. It's really fucking wild. Um, the Human Centipede. Too. All right, well, now th- this is gonna be controversial because a lot of people are gonna be like, "God, Jay is so fucking nasty and he's sick." When did he drink his first beer again? Today, <laughs> uh, it actually was two days ago. But either way, I think this movie. Um, and I've watched this movie several times. I actually watched this movie like four or five times. I don't think it's pretty rad, okay? And I and like it's obviously a it's 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 a um it's a hate letter from the director, and I can't remember his name. I, I love the guy. I think he's like fuck you, Dieter Laser. No, no, Dieter Tom Laser. Six, Tom Six, Tom Six. It's Tom Six is like hate letter to everybody saying, yeah, fuck you. I'll do what I want to do, and I'll do it my way. He's pretty much like the Zack Snyder of the horror world. Like he's like I don't fucking care. I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll do crowdfunding to make my movie. I put it at fuckable. It's not that bad of a movie. I don't think it's that bad of a movie. There's a lot of things about it that you can tell that the Tom six is, is just doing to make it gross on purpose. When you watch it, like there's some things in it that are unneeded, like the baby getting crushed underneath the, 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 uh, the gas pedal. It's Ooh. like, all right, you're just doing that shit. Cause you're pissed off that people didn't really respect your vision with human centipede. But I honestly, to be fair, like it centers around a fat, overweight security guard with like weird sexual fantasies of being obsessed with this movie and then acting them out. Um, that could be, you know what? That's more closer to reality in today's world than we give it credit for. I think it's fuckable. I think it's a decent movie. The black and white aspect doesn't hurt it. Then that's where we're gonna stick it, Jay. We're gonna stick it because I've never seen it. Because I don't. Once you told me about that baby scene, I'm like, I'm not watching that. And you're like, dude, come on, watch it. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna fucking watch it, Jay. Well, the third one, you like, should watch the third one though, because uh, Dieter Laser comes back in that one. He's fucking great. Like he's I'm full too much off of the. Completist. He's off the fucking uh, reservation on that one. Oh, you want to talk about off, off fucking reservation? We know where this is going, and I don't want to hear no goddamn lip about it. Okay? Look, but don't touch, touch, but don't touch. And while you're jumping from one foot to the next, he's laughing his sick fucking ass off. Wash your butt, never. Uh, all Devil's time. advocate for the all listeners time. on the podcast. Devil's advocate. What are you fucking out? He, uh, either Jay is like yelling at the IRS agents that just showed up to his door, or he's quoting the movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, this is one of the most rewatchable amazingly acted entertaining dark twisted fucked up weird fucking 90s 2000s that era movies of all time had that old school clip case dvd and we all know because we all watched so it good. so many times underrated as fuck it's a 10 out of 10 movie for me it's an all-timer all-timer it's an all-timer yep, yep. and it's so Put weird it you, can, you can watch that movie and then like uh a couple of months later watch it again and never get bored i, I don't know why it feels like the yeah. plot you like you like when you watch the movie, it feels like the plot could change. Like Keanu, <laughs> like Keanu Reeves might make the right decisions. Consider the sauce, son. <laughs> yeah, we're destined to lose, Dad. We're destined to lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking love it! Hey, dude, I think this is not a horror movie, but I had to throw it in, dude. Because come oh, on, dude. it came out in October. You're, you're crowding Skull. up the space. You're crowding up the space. I know, but Steven Seagal, Keenan Ivory Wayne's technically it's sort of a seven. It's a serial killer thriller. You know, you could say, you know, mm. see my friend here. He's a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. Got the, the credit card with the knife. And I love this fucking movie, dude. First it's one of best. The Glimmer Man. Yeah, you'd be dead. Uh, I mean, <laughs> dude, I mean, it's it's one of Seagal's better movies, especially in the later years of his career. It was, I think it was, like, I, I think honestly, Glimmer Man was the last one that he ever had that was like, a big hit in my opinion in my eyes when i saw glimmer man i was like yeah. this is the last a uh, hurrah for steven yeah. seagal's career i put this at pretty rad um and that's that's where i gotta put it um i i think it's a great movie i think it's actually really well done and uh, you can tell that the reason why it's well done is because they didn't let steven seagal direct scenes and they told him <laughs> to shut the fuck up you're an actor and we're gonna do things our way 
And uh, that's why it did so well. And I think Keenan Ivory, actually Keenan Ivory um, with Steven Seagal, better, one of the better partnerships. Yeah. Like as far as duos go. I mean, you know why? Because Keenan Ivory was like, man, I'll make fun of you all fucking day, bitch. I was saying, I'm going to get you, sucker. Suck my dick. <laughs> uh, and I also directed Scary Movie. So you're acting with a guy that's literally prolific or, or prolific in the uh, in the entertainment industry as not only an actor, a director, a creative force. Like So Steven Seagal was on his best behavior, I think, in this movie, and it tells. So pretty rad. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on pretty rad, too. I think that's where it goes. I mean, for Seagal's land, it would it would probably be almost touches the sun, but for an overall movie, uh, it's got good serial killer vibes in it. Like, they find all those dead bodies. This Again, it's very seven-ish, but, like, and there's some pretty good jokes in there, too. He's like, oh, some, uh, he, or he, he, t- he has him try that shit. He's like, man, what is this shit? He's like, that's dude penis. You just had dude penis. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I fucking love that movie, man. And, and then when he goes in and he tears apart, Steven Seagal tears apart that restaurant, beating everybody's ass. And then the phone rings and he answers it. He's like, hello, Lentos. No, I said we'd be closed for renovations probably two months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like hangs up. It's fucking all time. It was one of those few movies that uh, Steven Seagal is not the main, the main attraction as far as the hero. Right. And, and that's and that's unusual. He had he had to actually share space with another yeah. actor that takes that spotlight too, which yeah, you never see, Ivory, you never see that shit. Yeah, I love Keenan Ivory Wayne's too, dude. He was one of the unsung fucking Wayne's bros in my opinion. Even though he's one of the more famous ones, I still think he kicked ass. Um, and it was way like you said, it's way better than his partnership with DMX or Jaw Rule. Uh, I think I it's probably his best I, buddy I cop I, movie. To be fair, I liked Exit Wounds when I rented it. I remember renting it at it's all your right. video. Yeah. And I watched it. I was like, "Yeah, it's not bad," but I would never put it. It, it doesn't touch Glimmerman. No, fucking Glimmerman rules. You guys should watch it if you haven't seen it. Honest to God, uh, Stephen King's The Dead Zone came out in October. The movie, not the TV series. Christopher Walken. Yeah, it's uh, great. I, I mean, I put it pretty rad, dude. That's exactly where I would put it, Jay. You piece of fucking yeah. shit. Like, uh, and, and Christopher Walken played that part so well. He looks like in the movie. That he hasn't showered in three days, and he's got like <laughs> he's got like a weird penis smell on his dick, and he probably yeah. smells it when he walks around. I bet Christopher Walken's dick smells weird. Yeah, it definitely smells like old That's... cheese, and it probably smells like old cheese and feet. Yeah, speaking of, it, oh, th- I gotta change my pattern. Yeah, and on that note, I guess I'll sit here and not know how to come up with uh, a response on that back end. Uh... Show us your dick. All right. Well, hold on a second. I guess it's it's time to get demonetized. So give me one second. Yep, I'm not gonna do it. It's too it's cold in here. It's I can't small. get it. It's it's, it's, small. it's not small. I just it's cold in here, you asshole. It feels like Sub Zero farted in here. <laughs> and by the way, the reason why it's like that is if you'll not notice, I'm in an attic, and the attics get hot sometimes, and it's fucking hot up here. Even though I turned the air conditioner up, but I ain't goddamn Trump money. I can't afford. The air conditioner running constantly, so I have a fucking oscillating fan, and it's a piece of shit, and it rattles. And, Look, and I, no either show us your dick or, or not. All right, you, okay. One well, or the other. Pretty rad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! It's like when you're arguing with an Arby's employee. Like, like, yeah, There's yeah. no cheddar on this beef and cheddar. Like, sir, do you want to do it or not? Yeah. Do yeah. you know what do you know what makes you feel the fattest at a, at a fast at not a fast food restaurant but a sit down restaurant is when you go to somewhere and they like they're like doing the cheese thing and they're like just tell me when to stop <laughs> and you're or like Olive at, Garden and you know, you're with somebody and they're just like and they keep doing it and you're like you? what do you think they would do if you just never said anything like you just like okay I gotta go get another shaker <laughs> they probably like, like all right they probably I ran out of, I ran out of the cheese block <laughs> it would just be a pile. <laughs> It would look like the Himalayas. I don't know. I, I've been with people before, and like they will be like, just tell me what to stop. I never get that shit on my salad if it's like a Caesar. That's usually a complimentary salad with your meal. And they'll be like, just tell me when to stop. And they'll they'll be doing it, and they'll be doing this. And I'm literally – and the person was like sitting there. And it was like five fucking – it was like watching previews before a theater movie. And I'm like – I was staring at them. I feel like, I, I feel like my mind combined with the waiter. I'm like, just I, say stop, you diabetic. Yeah, what the I fuck? Hate- I hate forced, non-necessary human interaction like that. Yeah. Or uh, we have this new coffee place here called Seven Brew, and it's fucking awesome. The coffee's great, but the Sounds way they have so it set up, edgy. 
<laughs> it's yeah, I know. It's, it's 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 good shit though, and it's. Fucking... It, but they have all these high school kids outside, or like college kids, and they're like doing the Chick Fil A thing where they have like the iPads instead of just like a generic menu because oh. they only have like a small little area where they make the coffee. So they're standing outside next to your car when you pull up to order it. So like you talk to one. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. And so you order it, and then you pull up, and while you wait for the coffee, the teenager is fucking standing there next to your window, and every single time they're just like. So you you doing anything fun today? And I'm like, God damn it! I don't want to fucking talk to anybody right now. I I, I've not had my coffee yet. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) What are you doing? And then they're like, I'm like, I'm going here. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because of this. And they're like, what's your social security number? And I'm like, fine. You know, it's just it's so I hate that. What if you look at like I'm trying to fight the dark urges that rise up in my mind sometimes that I see someone walking (laughs) down the street, innocent maybe. I just want to go up and slash their fucking throat and then drink their (laughs) blood and then wear their face as a Halloween costume. Anyway, here's your iced coffee. And I, uh, I was like, yes. And you know what? One day when you get out into the real world and you see people like me, you're nothing but victims. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stab you to death and play with like, your blood. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was like, did I say that out loud? I have videotapes to return. It's like you're reading Kevin Spacey's notebooks from seven. He's like, <laughs> yeah, that's I like, threw up on a man on the train today. Yeah. Um, shit fuck. John Horside. Did you read this one? Yeah. I'll just fucking die then, Jay. I'll just go die. I'll okay. just go fucking die. All right. I'm sorry yeah. I fucking wasted all your time. Did you read this one? Yep. Fuck you. And I hope that you get herpes of the soul. Too late. Did you read this one? <laughs> yep. No. Nope. What time did you fucking stop? I, no, I, actually, I will read that one, but you, I, you uh, skip that one and go to the next one. I literally, I have to go for a second. Just give me one second. Okay. Where are you going? Where are you going? I, I'm going to hell if I don't change my way. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. I'll be all back. Right. Show me your dick. Uh, first child's one is damn boring till the last act as well as the second one. I just don't get it. First child's one. First child. First child's one is damn boring. First, fuck, dude. You're throwing my brain for a loop. I don't know what you mean. I want to know. I want to know what turns you on. Trucking inspired. First child's one is damn boring till the last act. First child. Fuck, dude. I, w- I can't figure it out. I can't fucking figure it out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I'm a piece of shit, and I'm going to die. Jonathan Mann said, Melissa, it's Ace. <laughs> if you guys have ever seen Ace Ventura, you know. That, that scene's so funny. It's one of those little tiny things about that movie that just are so goddamn underratedly funny. Just, just from the phone call. Just, Melissa, it's Ace. Oh, I love it. I love that movie so much. I literally, this is not a lie, my grandma got that movie for me on video cassette on VHS when I was a kid. And I watched it within two weeks so many times and rewound it so many times that the tape got eight in the VCR. That's how much I love the first fucking te- uh, pet detective. Um, Devin Nugent. So handsome. Just so fucking handsome. You know, you trust that guy when you see him. Maybe not, depending on the situation. But for the most part. May- Mike, you got to listen to Jeff Rosenstock. I think he's super up your alley. I love y'all. Thanks for everything. Hey, love you too, man. And I was kidding. I trust you with everything. I'll give you just instant message me and I'll, I'll send you naked pictures of my my and my wife and i and um our social security numbers it's fine um no but jeff rosenstock i have it did he do the uh i think the song is scram that song's dope i love that fucking song now don't you want to scram do sorry i had to change her cuffs i mean uh make sure that she was tucked in she's tuck in your who'd you tuck in <clears throat> just uh, nothing did your wife get out of her chains again? Again. <laughs> See exhibit A. I said I had to make sure she was tucked in okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Sorry. Sorry. God, the subtlety Sorry. is lost upon the Twitter user. April, blink twice if you need help. She's not on camera, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Child of the Corn says favorite Blink song is Every Time I Look for You. Fucking great one, dude. Hmm. Every time I look for you, the sun goes down. Was a childhood anthem and favorite Green Day song is Geek Steak <clears throat> Breath. That's a fucking awesome one, too. Well, well chosen. Well chosen indeed. Uh, which do you prefer, Idle Hands or Club Dread? Never Idle seen hands. Club Dread all the way through. Got bored as fuck. It's definitely Idle Hands for me. Yeah, Idle Hands. Uh, Club Dread was fine, but I feel like what happened, like it, it was really, it, wasn't that the, the, the sequel or the follow up to Super Troopers? Like that was their yeah. second movie. The yeah, problem with that, that movie is they tried false. to make it semi-serious with like a black comedy. They tried to do a comedic edge to a horror, and it just didn't work. I'm like, people just wanted to see a Super Troopers type of movie. Like Beer League was great. 
That should have been their follow-up movie. Or Beer Fest. Called, yeah, Beer Fest. There it is. Yeah, Beer Fest. Oh, that was one. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, they they've had a lot of disappointing movies. Like, Broken uh, Lizard. Yeah, Broken Lizard. The Slam and Salmon and shit like that. Super Troopers Two is kind of shitty. Yeah, it's all right. But Calaveras TV. I don't think I've ever seen you before here, man. Hey, either. man. Thanks for coming. And uh, th 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 thanks for coming. I got here late. Please start the whole thing over. <laughs> all okay. right. Some people do be like that, though. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I'm Jay. That's Mike. And Calaveras TV is here. And we're ready to dominate his ass. I mean, dominate his expectations and do really well for a change. <laughs> we do have people that like that. They're like, hey, I just joined the uh, the $5 Patreon tier. So I'm going to need you to come over and mow my lawn. <laughs> like, I, that's not exactly. I would do it if you were like mirror to me. I mean, we're yeah. like. We're beggars. But, That's in the ten dollars tier. We're workers too. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Hey, thanks for the super chat, man. Appreciate it and welcome. And Thank basically, you, you probably didn't miss anything. It probably only gets better and worse as we go forward. Probably worse. Austin, the snowman. <laughs> what? What? Uh, Miss Top TV, but my short list uh, Top TV shows the oh, last yeah, year yeah. did. You guys should watch it. I heard it was pretty good. Yeah, I know it uh, wasn't bad, but nobody turned out. <laughs> <laughs> uh number one dick 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 big season d, d, d daylight breaking zone what the fuck is dbz stand for jay dragon ball z you piece of fucking trash god you're such a fucking nerd yeah well so Jesus. so what <laughs> for what i can't afford a cabin in aspen <laughs> uh big wolf on campus i never heard of that one but that's cool i like the i have never heard of raw attitude oh raw like wwe yeah, yeah. that's a fucking WCW Nitro would have been in my top. I think if I, I I've always that. I've always been a Nitro fan over the Raw era, but Raw era was probably the highlight of WWF. To be fair, for sure. Yeah, that shit ruled. Breacher was great. Yeah. Um, I didn't finish watching it, but what I saw was awesome. Batman animated series, yeah. great one. Freakazoid never saw. Uh, Venture Bros. No. Tom, oh, the Tom Green show. That, that he's actually he's still. I think he's still doing uh, the Tom Green show. I think he does like limited YouTube stuff now and again. Yeah. yeah, he has like a vlog on YouTube Dude, or something. Tom Green show was like, uh, like that was so ahead of me. its time as far as like being the quintessential like YouTube interview um, blueprint. Like if he had just waited a few years and launched the Tom Green show on YouTube when it was launched, when YouTube was launching, dude, he'd be as big as like Jimmy Fallon or, or, or any of those guys. I think that Holy Tom shit, Green, dude. Tom Green was just in the wrong time at the wrong, you know, that's what it was. I mean, but he would, yeah. he would fucking kill in the current climate on YouTube. Fucking, he did great, man. You know he's a million. No, right? no, he fucking... he'd be like kick or something because he would never get away with what he got, like what he did. That's true. That's true. Beavis and Butthead, Earthworm Jim. Earth... Was that a show? I thought Earthworm Jim was a, a it game. It was. It, it was a game. And I think they made a limited series out of it, too. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. You know, you know what show was dope as a kid back in the day? It was the Super Mario Bros. show because they would have the live action Super Mario's bro and then they, yep. would, they would introduce the show and do some zany shit and then take you to the cartoon. But I was yeah. just like the human. Well, shit. it's always weird to me if you watch the Super Mario Brothers show. Like those guys probably should have been in the movie. And and, and don't get me wrong, Bob Hoskins and Leguizamo. I actually do like that movie sucks, and I get why people hate the Mario Brothers movie that came out in the '90s. I understand, but I kind of have like I kind of like it for nostalgia reasons. But yeah. like absolutely, if you're going if you're trying to be true to the game, the guys from Super Mario Brothers show should have been the guys. Like that was closer to the game. Than Bob Hoskins and and Le Leguizamo, yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I enjoyed that shit a lot. Um, how about remember this movie, Jay? Remember Posesor? We did a uh, we did a Patreon in person commentary for it. It was that weird fuck one where people were having sex, but their brains were all scrambled. That's all I can remember about it. David Cronenberg's son. Uh, no, I I don't I don't remember it. We liked it well enough. I think we liked it. We both enjoyed it. Uh, I I th I would. If you, that's I remember why, a that's, bit what, that's why you. I felt when I had to eat my ex wife's macaroni and cheese, <laughs> like because it, it wasn't that good, but she acted like it was amazing. And when people didn't eat it, uh, she'd get mad as fuck at me, like a banshee from hell. And so I yeah. would try to go around with a bowl of macaroni and cheese from her, like cooking, and be like, it's so good. And my face would look like that because it wasn't, yeah, that actually looks exactly like what I would picture her soul looks like. Well, that's what you she looks I mean? like when she got out of the tanning bed. Or yeah, or after like a whole box of the Franzia <laughs> wine, which is basically every Tuesday yeah, or Wednesday. Yeah, that's what she uh, looked like. She was screaming put, at me to get out. Yeah, I'm going to put Possessor in Fuckable. I think it's probably a little bit better a movie that. Not my cu cup of jib, and Jay doesn't remember that well. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it was It was like, it was, all right. it was pretty good. Pretty good. Fuck with your mind a little bit. Um, Don't remember it. 
Yeah. Um, here's one. Reanimator. Uh, you know what? Classic. I think I think it's pretty rad, dude. To be honest with you. Oh, you. I don't. Whore. I don't think it's no. I liked it a lot. I think it was goofy. It was. It was of its time. It, it did the like the '80s vibe is very strong because he was out in the '80s. I'm gonna um, tell Jeffrey Combs. Who? Jeffrey Combs. I don't Jeffrey, care I'm about tell your Jeffrey serial Combs. killer infatuation. I'm I'm telling no, here's the thing. I, I think it's a great movie. I think it's fun. I didn't, I, I actually, it's one of those movies that you watch, it, like the cover alone. I never rented this movie when I was a kid because the cover, it looks like one of those movies that were, were like the, uh, the nickel and dime horror movies that came out during the time in the 80s and 90s. This particular they would, one for sure. Yeah, they would just throw out anything that would stick. You know what I mean? Like back yeah. in those days, they would just throw out anything. The box cover to me just looked like that. But, uh, actually, uh, I think one of you, uh, one of the Patreon uh, requests was the first time I watched this movie. I thought it was great, but I never put it above anything more than uh, pretty rad. In, uh, in my opinion, I am going to have to take you into the streets and fight you like Rocky in the polls. Touch me and I'll sue. Okay. Uh, for me, this is an all timer. No doubt. Whoa. About it. Why son Chick Fil A Sundays? Buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fucking right. I meant that. So. Which means we go back to our old poll, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. You left it up to the crowd. The crowd said they think it's pretty rad. 66% to 34% almost touches the sun. Uh, so pretty rad is where that okay. one goes. I need to watch it. I do. But I, I refuse to watch it until you watch the entire catalog of things I need you to watch, Jay. Which no! Include, I don't want include... to watch I don't want to watch all the Sears catalog men's brief underwear selection. <laughs> well, since you're drinking tonight, when we get done with the stream, will you please watch the one more time video and cry? Will no. you fucking cry and watch it for me? No, and then more than you know, which is even more, better. And then I'll be like, I don't want to risk going to jail by going out and getting more beer. <laughs> and, and then True Detective season one. Yeah. All right. Then I'll watch this fucking movie. Okay. So uh, I'm going to put, let me throw that in the poll real quick. Well, it doesn't matter, dude, because I'm going to be up there next week. And that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to be like, hey, dude, that you got to listen to this now. That is, that, no, yeah, don't you actually don't watch it. For real, though, bro. I mean, I'm always, I mean, listen, we're like mid-tier. We're like in the between filming stuff. Just watch yeah. this. Yeah, I, I actually, that's true. I want I want you to watch it while I'm inside of you. That, that's mm. the only way I want you to experience it. Yeah, I'll just hold up a mirror while you're fucking in my ass. I'll yeah, hold exactly. it up like this so I can look. Yeah. yeah, while we're filming October Horror Month stuff um, for the for the coming Halloween Horror Month. Wow, it's no, cool. it's no wonder why we... I don't understand why we never get monetized. It's just it's it's mind boggling. It's also why we never get anything done. We're too busy never. covering each other's butts. It's just too much duty, duty dicks. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I got the old dude. I got duty dick, bro. Why'd you you should have wiped. You should have planned ahead. Oh God. Um, okay, scout zot guide. I got to put that in. What'd you guys say it was? Pretty rad. Pretty rad. Ah, uh, and then. Where do, Where do we go from here? Where do we go from? Oh, tits. Uh, all right, so pretty rads where that one goes. And next up, let's do we said we weren't gonna do the saws. Uh I got pretty pretty clear old timer here, all I feel right, like. Yeah, Am I right? That, that, yeah, you gotta throw it up there. Get out of my face. We don't yeah, need Texas to talk about it. You guys are coming up here trying to fucking kickbox me. I don't even know karate. It's an all-timer. I'm like, get out of my face, yeah. okay? Stickery and Steve. Stickery and you know it. It's a classic horror movie. It's one of the all-time greats. The original movie is actually it holds up well because it's disturbing as fuck. Like even now, I remember yeah. buying this on uh when it came out. Well, the first time it was released on Blu-ray, I bought it. I think it was twenty bucks at Walmart. I bought it. And I I came home and I watched it. It, it like it, it fucking it was disturbing, dude. Like I mean they didn't they they did a great job with enhancing the audio and and the footage and and you could just there's something about this movie that really puts you like like gives you an uneasy feeling i don't know what it is yeah it's Toby it's, Hooper, it's, it's he, he just did a great job with it overall it's one of the only movies like there's only a handful of movies that like you could really say are truly truly fucking disturbing that could yeah. really wreck your soul movies like the exorcist movies like the butterfly Dick effect chainsaw Michigan. That's I know, so like, butterfly effect jesus christ jay i didn't know that you I supported rapists uh <laughs> give me a break ashton kutcher in the <laughs> butterfly exactly effect. what happened uh, no, he did well. I know, but Ashley Kutcher <laughs> in the Butterfly Effect. I, that movie's disturbing as fuck. That is a disturbing movie. I, I wouldn't put it in that, but I put it close below because that movie fucks with your soul. Session nine was also fucked up. That was a fucked up movie. Hey, fucked up. 
You guys remember this movie? Anybody seen this piece of shit? Not this, piece of shit. I, I, this movie is fucking awesome. Uh, like uh, again, it goes back the to skin the skin I live in for those on the podcast. The skin sorry. I live in, yes, with the sexy Antonio Banderas. Uh, it's so good, dude. Um, and I don't want to give anything away because I feel like this movie has never gotten the attention or spotlight that it deserves. It is one of the most disturbing, most fucked up, most interesting horror films I've ever seen. There's a lot going on here. It's not just horror. There's drama. There's romance, I guess, in some weird fucked up way. Uh, and tragedy, obviously. But the way they present this movie and the way they film it is so... It, 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 it's so clinical. It's so clean that it's so that that that's what makes it so engaging. You know what I mean? It, like it, it, you can't you can't not watch it because the story, even though it's all subtitles, uh, I think this is a um, I don't know if it's a Spanish film or whatever. It's all subtitles. It doesn't matter. It didn't even need words because you can just. It's so well done visually that you can just follow it along without even knowing, without even reading subtitles. I think it's almost such as the sun dude. It's it it, it it it's so. It's so disturbing and fucked up, but also so well done and so engaging of a film. Uh, because you could put this as a drama, you could put this as a as a mystery thriller, you could put this as a horror, you could put this as several different things, except for comedy, obviously. But and also it shows I think it shows the range of Antonio Banderas in a way that you've really never seen. Yeah, he's well, he's subdued in the movie, which is crazy, and yeah. he's still fucking haunting and crazy. And for those of you who don't know, it's best to go into this movie not knowing anything about it because like yeah. you're watching it it's a doctor some guy shows up in a tiger outfit and starts humping shit uh and then all of a sudden the biggest twist about it is the most fucked up piece yeah. of all even though she does look like a crash chest, crash or uh, cat crash crash test, test crash dummy, test yeah. dummy. Yeah. fuck um yeah it's dude this movie once you realize the kind of the twist and what what's actually happening here all i'm gonna say is you know how some people stretch their uh stretch their ears with uh earrings to get the gauges i had like small ones and like uh when i was in a band uh, like you, you have to get like the little the larger and larger larger nodules to like spread your ears before you can put in the new things mm -hmm. they take that to the most fucked up level you could ever imagine in your fucking life and it's a torture is movie but it's not like saw it's more like cerebral it's fucked up man and i'll agree with jay i think it goes to almost such as the sun yeah that's where we're gonna stick it i keep saying that i, I think i might like need to... like I, like it's one of those movies that um you kind of feel dirty watching it you do but then you come back for more you're like yeah i wasn't satisfied enough now i need to see if there was something else i missed in it and fucking banderas is so hot i mean good in it like he's so so good in that movie uh, well, stop me in the back eh <laughs> what's in the guitar case the guitar i fucking i'm, ass, looking... Eh? I'm, fucking <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a man named bucho uh trick or treat now not the one you guys are thinking of probably with sam which spirit halloween is just fucking selling all the shit from this is a, a rock and roll like an 80s fucking rock and roll movie which featured gene simmons as a dj in the movie uh this looks like a this is like a, a nintendo cover for like a, like a game where it's like a it's hack like and contra? slash game yeah no not contra just like a hack and slash game where you're a barbarian and you're running around on 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 the 2d backgrounds and you're like yeah i'm i'm good i don't want to rent that because it's like gonna take up my <laughs> you gotta rent free get one free i'd rather just rent like desert strike on fucking Super do you, nintendo I've do you remember this movie Fuck no. We, no, we did a pay, we did a Patreon review. For no, this we did. This was someone's Patreon request. Uh, and it, it was a long time. <laughs> I ago. forgot all about it then. Jay, Jay actually just we just we get an AI version of Jay to do it. So sometimes he forgets which ones he did and which ones we had the AI do. That's all. It's not uh, a big deal. Well, hey, also we the had, cocaine. If we had the AI, there'd be a lot of things that we'd forget because we would just use that to fucking do things. Uh, <laughs> I, I literally, um, yeah, I, I forgot. Um, it's good though. I was saying, no, I, I like literally, I can't one. remember. I'm looking at the cover. I'm like, I don't remember any of it. Gene I'll Simmons make... was a DJ, and the kid like goes to Gene Simmons for advice, and the fucking band plays at the end at like the, at the I think it was like the high school dance or whatever. It was like the fucking evil band member or whatever. It's fucking crazy. I don't remember that much of it. I really don't. I remember it. To me, it's a pretty rad movie. Like it was pretty fucking fun. No, that's fine. I uh, don't remember. I, yeah, that's fine. I don't. I just don't remember it. I do need to remember it better, but uh, that's where I'm going to stick it. Um, God, I just keep sticking stuff everywhere. That's all I do. That's all I do. It's what I fucking do. Mm -hmm. And what I do isn't very nice, but I'm the best at it. Stick it. Oh, out. God. I'm you the want best it. there is at what I do. <laughs> I got a PJ. I got a PP. Okay. okay. Where are we at? Back. 
What we at? Uh, I think we're caught up, actually. Uh, I think we're sure? actually, I believe so. Oh, good. Okay. I believe we're all fucking caught up. Let me double check that. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we are. We are. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> we're all fucking caught up. Um, all right. All right. But, all right. Uh, keep, <clears throat> keep your eyes open. Y'all want to see chat and stick it in there and be real, real, real quick. Pick, pick your pockets. <laughs> Y'all ready? Shit. Talk. Let's talk. <laughs> Let's get live with it. Oh, again. It always My like name is Jay, and I like guys. Oh, I want to sweat Bella. with your dad in the sauna, and then we're going to watch baseball. And every time someone hits a home run, I want to grab him by his big fat head and say, God. <laughs> yeah. The inner monologue is working great. Uh, yeah, guys. Okay, so we're having a live situational conversation with each other. That's great, man. It's been a while. Well, I don't really, I, I rarely get to have a live combo with you guys. So it's going to be sexy and it's going to be awesome. Well, I do get to have live combos. What am I talking about? We all have live combos together while we're doing these videos, but I don't get to have, I don't actually get to talk to you guys while we're live. Um, you know, we're all cut up and stuff. So this is fun. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. D Lance, I'm going to stick that fat bat. Okay. Right, Jay. X in sense. Okay. Raph Lee says, Mike better pick the grudge next. Listen, no spoilers, but the grudge scared the fuck out of me. It's not going to be one of those movies for me that's going to really rank high on the tier list uh, because it doesn't, but it did scare me. So I, and I feel like that's how you judge horror movies. I mean, movies that stick with you, right? The movies that like make you think about them even after they're gone, after they're gone, like an old lover that you can still remember that the sex was good, but the crazy wasn't. Um, uh, troll times. Okay, well, that's a weird one. But hey, Jay, what would you do if fifteen big black men are standing at the end of your bed naked? I'd be like, all right, well, ready to go. Let's see what happens. Uh, D Mitch says, Jay, did you play the Spider Man game that came out three or four years ago? Yes, dude. Uh, I think I've talked about that multiple times. But yeah, I mean, I know I, I, I'm not I'm not trying to be mean about it, but yeah, um, I played uh, Spider Man on PS Five. And uh, Miles Morales. I liked them both. I thought they were really, really good games. Even though Miles Morales, uh, the game, the fact that they charged full price for it was kind of stupid. I don't feel that it was worthy of that price. I don't think it was a... It was a good, it was a good game. I just don't feel like it, it needed to be 60 bucks, I think, at the time when it came out. Um. And I'm 100% looking forward to Spider-Man 2. Not going to pre-order it. It comes out, what's October 20th or 21st or something like that. I'm not going to pre-order. I'm going to wait a few days to pre-order that. So, But I did play it. I did play it. Uh, Raph Lee says, Jay, can you give my brother Micah a shout-out? Hey, Micah. Hope you're doing well, Micah. You're not, Literally, you're named after a, a child of the corn. But I hope you're doing well, Micah. Mika. Um, Calaveras TV. Thank you, dude. Says uh, Michael Myers versus Kevin McCall McAllister. Two days prep. Who wins? Well, you got to go with McAllister. He's going to fuck Michael all up. Okay. Kevin McAllister to me is what the origin story of a serial killer would be. Uh, I think 100% Michael is fucked. Like this is this little shit is like the, the devil incarnate in a young age i think that he's going to come up with the most painful type of traps that's going to ultimately end with him tarred and oiled and then a flame hitting him in the in the eyeball and then setting on fire i don't know but i feel like kevin McAllister. plus by the way i've seen the good son with elijah wood and kevin McAllister, aka macaulay culkin <clears throat> is i feel like I feel like The Good Son is just a sequel to uh, Home Alone Part 2. <clears throat> you know, this is what happens to Kevin McAllister after he becomes such a psychopath with his family, after they've left him alone and the damage is done, you know, to his psyche, that they send him off to a foster parent that takes him in, and then The Good Son starts. Oh, my God. I just made those movies connect. Anyway, 
Um, but also, you, uh, I'm not, no, uh, I, I haven't played MK1. I know it rocks the shit. I watched the, uh, the, 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 uh, the movie, uh, the movie that they released on YouTube. So somebody took all the cutscenes, they, they, uh, edited them together and it, it was like a four hour movie. So I watched all that. So I, I, I didn't play the game. Uh, my reflexes aren't as good anymore. So I, I don't think I would be able to play the game and, and, uh, and, and complete the story because I suck at video games or fighting video games. Anyway, uh, I'm playing uh, Boulder Gate, Boulder's Gate 3 right now, having a fucking blast. I'm a paladin at 87 hours, and then I just started a new campaign, and I'm a warlock. I know. It's sexy, right? I know. I get it. But uh, I'm having a great time with uh, Boulder's Gate 3, and the next big thing I'm looking forward to is Spider-Man 2. Um Starfield, I, I want to get back to finish that, but I, I've just been so wrapped up in Baldur's Gate 3 that I haven't gone back and, and um, fucked around with that. So, uh, Trucking Inspired said, is there any better horror icons, or I'm sorry, is there any better horror icons better than Stranger characters since the 90s? A stranger, oh, I don't know what you mean, Trucking. I, I might be stupid right now. Is there any better horror icons better than the Stranger characters in the since the nineties? Stranger, oh the Strangers. Um, <clears throat> are you talking about the Strangers? I could be wrong. Uh, I don't know, but um, I would I would from the nineties. I would say Ghostface and uh, did Jeepers Creepers. I don't know if Jeepers Creepers, if he came out during, was it the early 2000s? I don't remember. But <clears throat> Mike, <clears throat> what? Truckin says, is there, uh, like, maybe I'm reading this wrong or not comprehending it. He says, is there any better horror icons better than the Stranger characters since the 90s? So I, I'm assuming he's talking about the Strangers. Yeah. Okay, that, that but yeah, but I would say oh, I get it. no, I get it. Um since the 90s. But didn't uh the creature from Jeepers Creepers come out in the early 2000s? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so that that's that's one. I, I wouldn't say it was better than the strangers. I think well the monster himself, yeah, I'd probably put him over the over that. So I'd go with that answer too. If there actually, was a, yeah. if there was an opening for a vote for like uh, like a new person to go into the 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 horror echelon of the of the horror franchise i would put the jeepers guy above the strangers even though yeah okay i just my brain was all yeah so even though the strangers are awesome i don't feel like they hold a candle to i feel like jeepers creepers was the last true uh at least attempt of giving you a um a a new horror icon yeah and i would say i'd say art the clown's on his way there for sure art the clown's pretty fucking great i think what, what they're doing with that so those two not a lot though you're right not a lot i mean bagul they only did yeah but he was movies, only so. but bagul i think what happened with bagul is like because uh sinister 2 sucked it, it lost all flavor yeah 100 percent. no i I'm, will say this though actually I, I i i'm wrong uh jeepers creepers uh creature was awesome but i would actually give it to um the ring or grudge girl uh samara yeah Samara, I think Samara too. might be ahead of both of those. There's a yeah, there's there's been a few, not as many as you would like, but there's definitely been a few for sure. Um, where's this fucking thing at? Oh, before you take your PP time, Joe Valentine says, Loomis, tell my boys to shape up and start listening. Goddamn, Joe, should I just take your goddamn kids under my custody and raise them? I told them several <laughs> things tonight. What the hell? Are they smoking crack in the back room playing fuck fight night? <laughs> Go get the belt, threaten them, turn off their Xbox 360s, or whatever you're playing, Atari, <laughs> and tell them to get the fuck to bed, because tomorrow is church, <laughs> and then on Monday, it's school time. Shape up, boys. We Listen need a Dr. Loomis father. Child's book. We need a Dr. Oh, Loomis yeah, Children's yeah. book. I'm going to get... <laughs> 
I'll, I'll write a child's book and then be on uh, on fucking MSNBC as like Trump considers Dr. Loomis as his new uh, <laughs> educational secretary. <laughs> hey, thank you, Chuck Inspired. Appreciate that, my friend. Handsome hey, man. man in that picture. Thank you, man. Handsome. Yeah, he's a good looking guy. All right, I'll be back. About it. I'll see you in a minute, man. Oh, shit. Hey, so <coughs> has anybody um, listened to the band Gaslight Anthem before? Uh, the wife and I went to Indianapolis, the city of corn, to see Gaslight Anthem at a place called the Egyptian Theater, which I will say is a really nice place to see a concert at. That place was dope as shit. It was all fancy and shit, but bad experience overall. Like you, we get there, and at the same time as this concert, they had Encanto sing along. So you go in the lobby, and it's this big theater lobby, and there's all these fucking kids running around. You're there for a concert, a rock concert, and there's also these kids running around everywhere. And we didn't know what booth to go to, like to get beer or like popcorn or whatever. There was fucking kids. It was wild. But we get in there and we see the band, and uh, Gaslight Anthem. I, I think my we were going because my wife loves them a lot. Um, I got them for her for Mother's Day or birthday or, or one of those things. Um, and we go to see them, and I, but I like a couple of their songs. I've always enjoyed them or whatever. But we see them. And this dude comes out and first off, when they came out and they got sort of big or whatever to now completely different looking person, looks like a completely different person, which was weird, but that wasn't the problem with the show. The problem with the show was like, we go see a lot of like small punk bands and stuff like that, or like punkish bands or whatever, like the Menzingers and stuff like that. And it's just like, when you go to these smaller shows and you pay like $25 a ticket or whatever, it's usually like a bunch of people just drinking and having a blast at, at a little show and the band's having a blast and they're having fun. But this was like fucking there was like five or six band members on this stage. And to me, like the music does not require that for what it was. There was a dude on keys, like sitting in the floor over in the corner. Nobody had any stage presence whatsoever. They all just kind of stood there and played their instruments. And the singer was super fucking. You could just tell he did not want to be there. It was so disheartening. Like you'd say he just didn't want to be there. Somebody like was holding up a sign or something, I guess. They didn't have a sign, but they were like, this is my kid's first show. And after the song, he's like, oh, it's your kid's first. He's like, I can't, what do you say? I can't understand what you're saying up here. And he's like, oh, it's your kid's first show. Neat. He was like, you know what happened at my first show? I saw a show. I don't know why everybody thinks that like they come to see a show and they should get like some big special prize. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy's kind of a dick. So I thought maybe I just misheard him, whatever. We just play the song, stop the song and be like, start complaining. And he's like, I don't know. It's just the music business. You know, just the music business just bums me out. And they play another song and then he, he plays another song. He's like, uh, so I was hanging out with Bruce Springsteen the other day. I was like, no big deal. I'm just hanging out with Bruce Springsteen. He says he likes our music. We did a song together. This is the song. Play it. I was like bragging about that. The whole time, it just felt like the guy did not want to be there. And it's crazy. I don't know. I've just, I've, I just, that, that just blew my mind. So it's like, we got done it. And she was like, yeah, I like them a lot less than I used to. I was like, yeah, me too. But another thing it made me think about was there are so many shitholes in America. Not, I'm not, this is not an American thing. But like we get out of the theater and I've just noted this, like the surrounding states around us, like just lately when I've been traveling, I always end up, it seems like it's 50, 50, wherever you stop, or wherever you go, you're going to end up in a shithole part of town somewhere. That's like sketchy as hell. And I didn't feel like it used to be that way. Right. Anyways, we get done with the show. We're waiting for our Uber. We're like, Hey, let's go get some snackies at the, at the marathon. We go up to the marathon and, uh, we go in there and the place is packed and it's one of these places you can tell it's a bad part of town because the guys behind the counter literally have giant plastic like guards on their doors on over the counter or whatever not for covid but for like robbers and shit and and it's just a shit show in there and it's everyone's super scary looking and sketchy this dude in front of us he's like six foot five had a fucking ski mask on in the gas station at one o'clock in the morning a fucking ski mask in the gas station and it he was wasn't a like superhero a black... mike <laughs> it wasn't just like a black ski mask it was like it looked like a fancy rug it like had all the shit on it and the, the, the guy didn't even like black bad and i just like checked him out some dude tried to steal a mountain dew while we were there he's like hey you didn't pay for that he's like no man that guy that guy paid for my mountain dew. he's like no he didn't he's like it's okay i got you on cameras and another dude's like hey that's the under dude cop over there and the dude just like took off running i don't know was man baja oh. blast you can have <laughs> it for like, free it's, cool. it's baja blast <laughs> uh, i think i think baja right blast is like shit I, I like it. I like Baja Blast Zero. Oh, I do. I enjoy no. it. It tastes um, like some, it tastes like melted ice cream. It's a good vo vodka it's mixer like, too. Like, it's like a slushy that you get from uh, Speedway when it gets all like watery at the bottom. That's what it tastes like. 
Baja Blast. I don't know why. Maybe it's I, that makes sense. Well, at Taco Bell, it's better because it's from the fountain because it was fresh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't realize I did the Doctor Chalice voice when I did that thing. <laughs> oh, dude. Um, oh, uh, wait. Uh, really quick, I will answer X Shin. Uh, I forgot. I, I, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't see. Uh, for who I've romanced, Shadowheart. I'm a human paladin. Okay. I romanced Shadowheart in Baldur, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I, I was, uh, you know, very basic, very uh, not original. And in my new playthrough that I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm doing uh, Warlock, Tiefling, and I'm <laughs> going to uh, romance Karlak. So, oh. uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. But Asterian is very cute. He's a vampire. He's a dude. I'm like, you know what? If I played a female character, I fuck you. But I don't want to do that because I don't play female. I don't play female avatars in the in the games. I don't. I, I never understood. I know why. I don't get that though. I never got that. Like why dudes that you know they'll play like female characters with and they'll make their tits huge and then they like go like in World of Warcraft and they do that. Like if you're gonna play a game and you're gonna make your character like a female, then you make them look like the biggest slut that you can. Like, I, yeah. I just feel like it's weird. I don't know. I never, I, if I'm a dude, I'm a dude, I'm going to play a dude character. I, I never pick, I never have done a female playthrough on any of the RPGs I've ever, ever played. Ever. Yeah, I don't want to be horny the entire time I'm playing a video game. Like, this is me time, all right? This is not jerk off in the bathroom time. Yeah. All right? I, I don't I don't get it. I, I mean, you know, it's fine if you want. I mean, some of you be like, well, the story's better. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if we're saying that, <laughs> uh, that's I, fine. I wanted to bring this up. Smudge mentioned no one will save you. There's this movie on Hulu right now. It's an alien movie, dude. I saw the trailer. It looks scary as fucking shit. It looks Wait, it was a so scary. Theater? No, it's in, it's on Hulu. It just came out this week. Oh. I don't know why I didn't go to theaters, but everybody's talking about it. I can't wait to watch it. I like. I think it's going to be fucking awesome. You should watch the trailer for it, dude. It's I, fucking, it looks freaky. I ain't got the Hulu. I got Hulu hoops. I ain't got Hulu. <laughs> ben Jammin, not Trammer. Hey, have you ever done the, the, the Hula hoops at Hooters? Have you ever been forced to do that? I don't know if you, I think you did. No, that I mean, no we were, I was there with you. Uh, I don't know. We used to hang out back in the day, but I remember we went one time and we had, yeah, to I, I don't know why you're saying like, it's my fault, but it's your I fault. You you shit, I invite you to shit all the fucking time. You're like, no, you oh, don't. I, got a no, you don't. I can't do it. I, I got I don't too gay. I, I, I'm no, just, I'm too, I'm gay. too, I'm too I'm, busy I'm too staring at guys. On I'm mysterious. Line. I have to keep my Batman persona. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no. I re- we went to uh, we went to that one time that we went to Hooters that you had to give birth to the football. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. That was fucking. That was you. You, you went all out with that one, but I uh, Ho- yeah, I never did the hula hoops yeah. one though. You should have won. But, but, I don't think you won. No, I did not win. I actually offended all the Hooters waitresses and everyone was mad at me. That was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, so, and that know, was before the Roe v. Wade overturned. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, quick story. We went to Hooters. We used to go to Hooters every once in a while for Monday Night Football, and they would have like contests. Like we did a push up contest with a dude one time. Uh, did a chicken wing eating contest, and you would win like free wings and free yeah. beers and shit like that. And we go up there, and they're like, "All right, touchdown dance competition." And Jane, everybody's like, "Mike, do it." I'm like, "No, dude, I don't dance." They're like, "Do it, do it." Kept talking me into. It. I was like, "Fine, I'll fucking do it." So I went and signed up for it, and then it was just me and one other dude. And this dude yeah. was corny as shit. And like they yeah, throw it was you a generic. It was generic. He generically did it. Oh, yeah. They throw you a little football and you do a touchdown dance. And if you win, you get free wings and shit. And everybody's like, yeah, I did. So this guy goes before me and he catches this little football and he literally just does like the Gronk spike. And he's like, yeah. woo. And they're all like, ah, nice. and I'm like, fuck this. But I, I went up with zero plans. Like I walked up onto the onto the floor with no fucking idea in my head of what I was going to do. And when my I came up with twisting into the disgust that I had back then. Dude. I was like, oh, oh I don't it's know. one of the most like you, you, ever, you guys ever have those moments where you're just trying to go to sleep and you remember something yeah. really embarrassing. I, 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 know, like, oh. dude. I remember watching it. I was like, I can't delete this. Oh, I'm literally God. here. It, like I'll Mike went, okay. uh, fucking straight David Cronenberg. Mike went like, yeah. I want to do the weirdest, nastiest shit that won't be fucking forgotten on this <laughs> little area of Hooters in Lexington. Yeah. I want to do and- something that people are going to talk about in 10 years. I, th- I I just I I fucking I thought I'm gonna do something. I'm just gonna come up with something great. It's like when you walk up to the Taco Bell menu and you don't have a plan or you order you end up ordering something you don't even like. Uh, mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. I was like, I look at the Hooters waitress. So I was like, give me that piece of cardboard. It's like, you got a pen. So I wrote down mm-hmm. something on the cardboard, right? And I was like, all right, when I catch it, you hold this up. And I gave it to the girl. And I'm just making shit up on the fucking fly. And then yeah. I catch the football. And I lay down in the floor of the Hooters on my back in front of God and everybody. And I pantomimed an entire birth of a football. 
yeah. with screaming and everything, like on my back, legs up in the air. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> and produced the football. And I was like, hold up the sign. And she holds up the sign and it says nine months later because I caught the touchdown. And then I had the touchdown baby. And literally no one made a fucking noise in the end. It was just me pantomiming a birth. No, I, 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 you, I went. <laughs> I did clap a little bit, and then I saw the disgust on everyone's faces, Ugh. and then I stopped because I didn't want yeah. to get arrested along with you. And One then, of the hooters just like, actually went, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is life. I'm giving birth to life. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I, I thought, like, you could just do, like, take the football and put it on something and then start taking pictures of it like it's doing a photo shoot. There's and many be, things I could have done, Jay. That'd be cute. That'd be cute. And then Michael's like, nah, dude, I'm going to fucking birth that shit, bro. I'm going to birth a football out of my mangina. I'm going to birth it out of my asshole, and I'm going to hold it up and be like, you see, I live and breathe football so much that it fucks me in the brain, and I give birth yeah. to the glory. Yeah. But yeah, uh, at the end of the day, uh, did you win? I don't think you know. They no, gave I lost. that guy. I lost. You were disgusting. Uh, they almost but maybe you know what you know was uh, you were just you were misunderstood like David Cronenberg and and Tom Six just misunderstood. Yeah, it uh, it was a dark night in my life, and it's also dark that apparently Ohio State just lost. God damn it! Everything sucks. Everything sucks. What's the Ben Jamin? Yeah, Ohio State's in the top ten, aren't they? They were. They're about to lose to uh, Notre Dame apparently. <laughs> Fuck. Well, because they have um, Rudy. Yeah. Fucking Notre Dame. Sup, boys? Hope you're doing well. Have you guys seen 80s comedy Real Genius? Underrated mm -hmm. movie? Much love. I don't remember that at all. Personally. Val Kilmer. Really? Yeah. It's pretty. Did you like you know, it? Yeah, it was good. It was. It's not bad. I don't remember it like being like, holy shit, this is a, this is like a staple of an 80s movie. But I, I did enjoy it. Val Kilmer was really great, uh, good in it. But yeah, I, um, I you don't have to watch it, dude. Uh, it's not one of those movies like, oh, if you don't watch the Real Genius. With Val Kilmer in the 80s, you're not a true 80s fan. It's not like that. It felt like one of those movies that was a filler kind of movie in between like summer releases. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That checks out. I think I've seen the cover of it. I think I do remember the mm -hmm. cover of it for sure. Child of the Corn says, Damn, Mike, you're making it sound convincing to come see you guys next month. We'll be there regardless. Be ready to drink. Get drunk with Doug Bradley. Oh, yeah. Doug Bradley's supposed to be there, I guess. Fucking dude, this what do you mean fest making is crazy. it sound convincing to come. You should come we were, anyway. Yeah. We we're talking about fingering. God, other, dude, child. Maybe. Do you want to see some real fucking corn? Come to Kentucky during the autumn, uh, and, and be ready to get drunk with Doug Bradley. Are you gonna bring him over to the table and like Dude. have him be like, "Let's have a fucking shot" because that'll be cool. Yeah, I mean, it's free to come over and say hello to us and get us to sign some shit or take a picture, or whatever you want, or just to totally ignore us if you want. Uh, but apart from that, Scarefest is worth it just to come for it's all fun. the fucking. There's gonna be a ton of people there this yeah. time, like a really lot cool of people. Atmosphere. They've actually yeah. um, Scarefest in uh, in Kentucky has actually done. Uh, they've actually reinvented themselves in, in a in a very awesome way. Uh, when me and Mike first went to Scarefest, it was it, the first couple of times it wasn't awesome. I mean, there was a lot of problems going on, but they've actually come a long way from that, and they've they're putting on a they they put on pretty good shows. They they do a very good job with what they have now. But as far as Doug Bradley goes, I ain't paying it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife, uh, my April was trying to get me to go, and then she said, "You want a picture?" I was like, D "Dude, no, I don't want to fucking, I don't want to do that. I don't do that. I don't take pictures. I don't do that kind of shit." It's, I don't. One, it's well, we awkward. take pictures with you guys, but we don't pay to. No, take yeah, I take other. pictures with you guys. I don't want to go up to, you know, like Doug Bradley or and and again, I'm not like showing or throwing shade on people that do that, but it's just too awkward. I, I, maybe I'm just an awkward guy. Like I'm like, all right, peace for freedom in our time. <laughs> when I'm trying to take a picture with them, I don't want to do that, uh, and I I just don't. And, and then uh, I never also, do. I've never. I've never I'm also a cheapskate. I don't want to pay money for like. I think it's like sixty bucks or seventy bucks to do it, or fifty bucks. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. There's only certain people I would like. Obviously, like Blink One Eight Two or some shit were there. Like certain like certain people, but like for me growing up as a kid when there weren't any of those conventions like going to a ball game and acts ac accidentally like or if like you run into somebody or you you happen to catch somebody on the sideline or something to me yeah. that was like super like oh my god once in a lifetime moments and i, I don't this is not 
I'm not trying to shit on anybody that does pay for them. I think it's rad that people do it. Yeah, they get great. the really yeah, cool. cool autographs and, and their, their cool pictures and stuff. For me, it's always just been about the chance encounters, what makes it so special. So I've never been that into doing it, but there are some people I would pay. Yeah. You know, it just well, depends. I, mean, I think the number one on the list, without a doubt, I, I would literally pay like a hundred. I, I would probably, I, not 200. I'd probably pay a hundred bucks. And I know it would be more than that, but I would, I would throw out a hundred. I, I would throw out a Hondo. For Van Dam, easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would too. I would too. Not Seagal, not anymore. But Van Dam, no, but, you bet your Van tents. Dam, I mean, you might even convince me to throw out two hundred. Yeah, yeah, I, it's possible to to no. be able to touch that. Like man's you could skin. be like, you could touch his fucking <laughs> like slick back with sweat on it, and be like, yeah, I've, I've seen this back in Bloodsport so many times. When yeah. you screamed when you were blind, and then you came out of it. <laughs> 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 it'd be fucking amazing dude joe valentine says sorry boys missed the first thanks guys missed the first uh, what does mean? i think we got did, all your did, I, uh, did we miss uh, his first super chat uh no I, I think i did your joe before he said loomis tell my boys oh no no yeah i we did that one i did that one yeah, yeah I, th- I, I hope we got you joe joe hey joe where are you going with that? Come in your hand. Adrian Yabar said, look, 901 Eastern and Terrifier 2. Look, 901 Eastern. And Terrifier 2 was an epic in October. Yes, that also did come out. I think that's on the list, actually. We can... Um, mm. Well, we're going to disagree on this one, so it's going to go to chat. Um, It's not... Maybe I don't have... Oh, yeah, I do have it here. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, here we go. Terrifier 2, where do we stick it? We probably will. This will probably go to a vote for you guys because Jay and I disagree on this one. Yeah. I <clears> am willing to <throat> say that Terrifier 2 almost touches this side. Wow. Well, I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to fucking say You're it. You're bringing the scorching rays to this gunfight now. Wow. I'm going to fuck it. Poor soul. What's your just too hot strong. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put this movie... Dude. For me... It's a uh, oh, man. It, that ending and the way that the movie plays out. I, I'm just gonna go with my heart and fart. I, I feel like it's fuckable. I do not feel like this movie is anywhere near the gargantuan like Titan level that people make it out to be. I just don't. The first one's amazing. Uh, for me, it's fuckable. But that's where I'm at. It's fuckable. The Let's angels and demon world, shit, like, it, like I feel like it's like introduce, like when you introduce a backstory to Michael, you kind of ruin the whole fucking thing. In the case of, so I'll put this one to a vote right now. Uh, Jay says fuckable. I say almost touches the sun. I'll put this one to a vote. In the case of the last one, Reanimator, the crowd says thirty four percent said pretty rad, twenty percent said almost touches the sun, but forty seven percent said all fucking timer. Bunch That's of degenerates in the out. chat. I, I I will say that, and I agree with you, you pieces of shit that have all been inside of me in one way or another. I do oh. think re- Reanimator's an all timer. Jay, you're wrong. You need to go back and rewatch it, and you need I to have. let me suck, suck the glow juice, the green glow the juice, glow juice, the, suck the glow <laughs> juice out of my wiener head. <laughs> yeah exactly. That's how we settle our differences around here. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, so I'll stick that there. Where to go? I'm surprised. Actually, like Reanimator to me, I would think that this would be a movie that would be one of your all time favorites. I'm shocked you don't like it that much. I Just am. Because a guy kind of looks like Crispin Glover and I love Back to the Future. It doesn't mean it's automatically going to get a pass. You're crazy. You're cr- I like you, but you're crazy. <laughs> uh, all right. So let me put Terrifier 2 to a vote real quick. Terrifier. Yeah, I don't know what it was about Reanimator that I just didn't connect with. I don't know what it was. I, I liked it, but again, it's goofy. It's kind of weird and goofy in its own way, and and there's a lot of goofiness going on. But either way, the crowd has spoken, so we will respect they, thou uh, decisions, thy decisions. Respect you all, I'm inside of you. Wait, what? How about Book of Shadows, Blair Witch fucking 2? It's not as bad as I remember it being. It's not a great movie. As far as no. a follow-up uh, to how amazing Blair Witch was. It's not on the level at all. Um, It was a standard Hollywood eyes film of a property that did very well. That was low budgeted. Um, I feel like it's fuckable. That's where I'm at. 
I'm a, I'm a fuckable. I think it's a good movie, and there's like one scene that fucking like makes my tits hard. Where it's like the fucking herky jerky shit, like not in a good way, where I get scared. But other than that, the movie itself, there's some lore drops. It's still like it's still like a very again Hollywoodized film of of a great independent movie uh, follow up. So it's fuckable to me. That is that is exactly where I would put this one too. Like I I, I watch it. It's got that that goth chick in it. And the, the other, the redhead one, Ooh. there's all that stuff going on there. That's a yeah, party, hotness, you know, hotness. and I love that stuff. But as a movie, it's just like, whoo, this is kind of a stinky, stinky yeah. fucking all over the place. But I do love that one guy. Like when we watched it with Eric, he's like, there ain't no goddamn Blair Witch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That shit was great. It, it, it's not, it's not a hard movie to watch, but it's not an enjoyable movie. I, I guess that's, I mean, there are parts yeah. of it that are like, oh, it's pretty cool. And then it's like, yeah, all right. How much fucking time do we have left on the reel? Yeah, exactly. Hey, give me one second. I'll be I'll be right back. Two seconds. Two. Fuck. New comments. I went to new comments, guys. So I don't. I'm I'm right here with you. We're together. We're like in Poltergeist Two when the family reunites in that bubble of hope. You remember that scene? Anyway, so now I can read the chat. As it arrives, fuck, dude, that heartburn is really getting to me. I gotta get some. I gotta get some uh, Tums or what are you? Th- is Tums better than Pepto? I like. Tums sorry, better. sorry, sorry. Uh, child- Jay, who is your favorite Giants player of all time? Says Child of Corn, uh, Lawrence Taylor. Which is you, you, you mean Daniel Jones? Yeah, I, I can't. I, I can't not love Daniel Jones because he, he shares the same last name as me. Well, cousins, <laughs> don't you know? Uh, but it's Lawrence Taylor. But I would, dude. I, I to be. It's not Eli because it's too easy to say Eli. I loved. Uh, I loved Phil Sims. I think Phil Sims is like the most basic fucking quarterback you could ever have. But he did his job so effectively that they won those Super Bowls back in the nineties. You know what I mean? Like, and he wasn't trying to go out and be like the big superstar he just was an effective quarterback with the right team around him and he executed phil sims is like and, and like he's also from you. he's also from cynthia and kentucky so that's pretty cool i didn't know that yeah i didn't know that thank you for that for that well maybe if you hadn't tried to shout over me that you wanted to kill me you would have <laughs> heard it. i said that and i was like oh damn that i, I just said i wanted to murder you that's <laughs> i know fuck it was true though just kidding <laughs> uh Robin Bark said, not sure how much truth there is to this, but I hear Mike Flanagan is trying to fight his way to reboot in Elm Street. I think he'd be great for the franchise. Thoughts? Fucking thoughts. Uh Mike Flanagan again. What was it that he did? <laughs> he Mike Flanagan did uh the Shining sequel. Oh. Oh, yeah. He did uh all the Haunting of Hill House, all those Netflix shows that he's done. Um he did yeah. uh, Hush. He did uh, okay. Oculus. Okay, yo, I'm. I, let's do it. Let's, let's do have it fun. Let's put on the sweater and swipe some kids out of existence. I'm ready to do that <laughs> with you, Mike. Uh, no, I think Mike Flanagan actually, um, yeah, based on uh, on his body of work and what he's done, I think he would he would bring um, exactly the type of mentality that you would bring to that character. The the problem, and it's not a problem. The thing about a lot of these directors that that approach freddy krueger is like you're you're wondering are you are you going to take inspiration from the latter versions of of freddy krueger where he's kind of goofy and he's trying to be like comedic and and you know what i mean like pop culture-y or are you going to be the are are you going to be the the follower of the original wes craven idea of what freddy krueger was he's a pedophile he's disgusting he he's more in the shadows uh villain i mean it depends on and I think Flanagan could could give like listen, I mean, um, for me, Dr. Sleep was not like he wasn't sucking the dick of the shining. Like he paid respects to it and he understood why it was important and he integrated that into his own version and understanding of the movie. But I feel like Mike Flanagan did a great job with that. I mean, who like do you know how hard that would be to make a sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining? And he did it. I think he did a fucking fin- I think uh 
uh, that that movie is is unheralded one of the best sequels I've ever seen. Doctor Sleep is fucking amazing. Um, yeah, he'd be all right. I think that I think it would be a slow burn, and I think that would, be, and I think that he would keep Freddy in the shadows a lot more than people. Some people would 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 like, but I think that's that's what works for the character is the fact that he's a creepy, nasty predator that lurks in the inky black of your dreams. I think that's what blacks. I like that. that yeah. Sounds, well, I think that's that what makes hot. him work. I think that's what makes him unique is the fact yeah. that he's like a spider. He's like a fucking spider that comes down when you're vulnerable and strikes when you're caught in the web. I don't know. I, I totally agree. I do. And, and from what Mike Flanagan literally tweeted, he was like, trust me, I want to do nightmare. I want to reboot it. He's like, I, I don't even know who the fuck I'm supposed to get a hold of because the, the, the right situation is so messed up. He basically tweeted that. They need so to give him the 21. A twenty four, yeah, no, that's that, what I said. A twenty four and fucking, yeah. it's like, I don't know what his. I always get those Netflix. Yeah. I don't want it to go straight to Netflix for sure, but Mike Flanagan, I think, would be a great choice. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about that. There's no fucking doubt about that, buddy. Calvera's TV says y'all should watch the Jester short films on YouTube. Halloween vibes to the max. There's three of them things, and they always come out in October. Full movie coming very soon. Never the heard Jester. of that, but I, I, yeah, I don't know what that is. Jay and I started, we did a, a couple of those reactions to those horror shorts. So I will keep that in mind next time we do one of those, man. I love Halloween atmosphere so much. I, I just, it makes me horny. It makes me want to fuck. Well, we, we did that, um, the head in the box. That was fucking yeah. stupid. That was fucking stupid, guys. Like, I mean, I know that people love it and I understand like it's, maybe we're just not smart enough to get the horror in that. But I was like, all right, so a fucking head appears in a box and we just look at it. For fucking twenty five minutes, <laughs> like, that was yeah. Uh, it was it was underwhelming for sure. I had yeah, a good premise, I but I felt like ultimately in the end it ended up kind of underwhelming. Uh, how about how about this guy right here? Thirty days and not that uh, came out in October one year. It did I, again. I feel like it's a movie that's underrated. I, I feel like it's a movie that um, showcases uh, vampires in, in a non sexy way, which you don't see too much of at all anymore. Like they're always sparkly or they're fucking hot. Or they were like former employees of Abercrombie and Fitch. This movie <laughs> says fuck that. This is like skank central. This is like sewer skank from the Vegas streets or California, LA. The the ones that are like I'm I, I'm missing my meth. Uh, <laughs> and also, uh, dude, like let's be honest, like um, the lead actor here, uh, and I can't what the fuck, Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett was awesome. Good man. What an awesome actor. Uh, I think that he got it. Kind of got fucked early on in his career because he was a part of these big movies that he was the teen heartthrob, but he did a great job in this. I, I would have loved to have seen what Hartnett would have done if he hadn't been like kind of typecast as like the bad boy of high school. Yeah. Ultimately the graphic novel is awesome. I feel like they do a very good uh, adaption of the graphic novel to film. It's not the perfect thing, but it's pretty rad to me. It's pretty rad. Uh, that's exactly where I'd put it, dude. Like, I feel like the movie is an amazing idea, and I love the way it's cast, and I love the way the vampires look, even if they kind of they overdo that three hundred vibe a little bit. You know what I mean? Well, like, they also ah, the vampires are a little bit too like evil. Like, I yeah, suck the marrow from your bones. <laughs> like, right, but shit. the idea, the idea of living somewhere that is darkness for thirty mm-hmm. days, Insomnia did a great job with it. With smart, Rob Williams, smart. And Al Pacino, yeah, smart. Yeah, and putting vampires in that environment, it's awesome, based obviously on, on a graphic novel. And I love the casting, Josh Hartman. <clears throat> the movie does get kind of drab at times, but when it's scary, it's really fucked up and scary. Uh, but yeah, that's what and I also you, you have the you have the uh, I don't want to spoil this because some people again it's underrated, might not have seen this movie. The ending is actually uh, an unusual ending. Uh because you get like uh a sacrifice that you don't you don't see coming. Yeah, it, it surprised me too, dude. It's a it's a darker movie than you're used to. Mm. It's kind of weird. There's almost no movie like Thirty Days a Night. You know, it's just a strange little yeah, like it's own, it's its own thing. Yeah, it moves at its own pace. We're all mm. almost filled up in the pretty rad section, uh, which is wild. Um, <coughs> Adrian Ibarra says, "Loomis, you are blamed for Ben Tramer's death." Thoughts? Yeah. Okay, here's the thought. Uh, you are blamed for. Staying out too late at tailgating parties and taking pictures of bitches that you know that are too young. <laughs> got you on that one, Adrian. He got you on that one, buddy. I know. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's false, Adrian. I, I'm kidding, but uh, I, had to, I had to come up with some salty shit. 
<laughs> That's good. Um, how about uh, I just cl- I just took one completely off the fucking list, which was really dumb. I know. I saw I, um, I saw you doing it, and I was like, I'm I didn't mean it. to. It was an accident, and I'll never know what it was. Someone in the chat, please tell us. Annabelle, I'm. You know what, dude? We don't have a single entry tonight, and sucks my butt, Steve. For me, Annabelle sucks my butt, Steve. The I'll let you one. have that one because I can barely remember it. So, yeah, like completely not like interesting at all boring as fuck never like the sequels were all better i like the sequels uh, yeah i the the one uh annabelle uh origins the barn one 1800s i thought or that was fucking creation or what yeah yeah that and, was uh, awesome. yeah so I, i'm gonna let's stick her in stuck some of that. See, i think that shit that that was awful like yeah. i did not enjoy that I, movie at yeah. all I, I i i haven't seen oh all time i think about all time man all time i think so too all time i think so we we Fuck were talking time. about like horror icons or villains that are created uh that would be part of that pantheon. It definitely is Candyman. He's one of those guys that came out late to the game, but this guy was the guy that you added to your roster and he helped you win the fucking national championship. Okay? <laughs> like this is the guy. Like he transferred out of, of a of a winning team to go to a shitty team and he's like, "I got you." And you're like, "Fuck yeah, dude. I love Candyman." Candyman is it's a, it's a tragic movie. It's a horror movie. Uh, it's a drama. It's a dramatic film. There's no comedy really in it, but there's a lot of levels of this movie. There's a lot of there's a lot of political speak in this movie, but not in an overt way that makes it that that takes away from the film. It actually does a very good job of conveying the message without beating you over the brow with a dick. You know what I mean? Which, <laughs> by the way. You know, uh, this movie and Ramiro movies, film directors today could take a lesson from these if they want to get a message across without browbeating people. So 100% yeah. all-timer. Yeah, I love the message of the movie. It was dark. It was twisted. It was subtle. It was fucking mean as shit. And he was scary as fuck with that. Oh, <laughs> shit that he was doing with the but fucking it was also bees and all that. Tony Todd, he, he did such a good job of being uh, uh, vulnerable. Where you actually felt bad for his character, like you weren't yeah. like immediately disgusted by what it, it, you understood. Yeah, I think like Candyman. Like, yeah, a, it was great, man. It was it's on an all timer. It's a horror all timer for sure, no doubt about it. And it's actually like, and again, one of those few movies that's actually fucking scary in parts. Like, there's certain parts of Candyman that actually free. It's not well, like you, a, know what, you know what's scary about that movie is the fact that uh, there's one flashback scene. And you're like that. That should happen. Yeah, there's a flashback scene that happens in the movie. And again, I mean, some of you folks may not have seen the movie or are given it a chance. There's a there's a scene that happens. You're like, this isn't like some woke ass shit or like a retelling of a woke like perspective. This actually fucking happened. A hundred percent, most likely ha- could have happened anyway. And it's like, not that well, specific story, but things like not it, that yeah. specific like, story was fake, but like that kind of attitude or that kind of mentality definitely existed. And it fucking was like, oh yeah, it's fucking anyway. Crazy. Yeah, I totally agree. Hey, let's stick another one in all in yeah, Steve's butt. Uh, Steve's, well, Steve's but, a little lonely. Yeah, it's yeah, that's the anal bead of Steve Butt right there. <laughs> yeah. The fog remake. The re- this is the remake came out, and it's one of the only it's, I could count on one hand the amount of movies I've actually walked out on in my life. And the fog remake was 110 percent one of them. I, I barely made page. it through half I rent, of this. I, I rented it. The, I rented it. Um and I love Selma I, Blair, but well, uh, well, uh I liked um uh, what's his name? Um, Tom Welling. I actually, because I was a, I, I'm a fan of Smallville, so Tom Welling was in this, and so I was like, oh, it might be. It was, dude. What, what a fucking trash ass movie. What a trash ass movie, and it's obvious that you were banking on the the the, the name, the fog, to get asses in the seat. It was, it yeah. was, it was terrible. It's a fucking shit movie. Utterly shit fucking movie. pointless and dumb. And you know what? The fog is one of those weird movies that actually, I think calls for a remake like i think it was a great yep. idea and it had some freaky ass shit but yeah it kind of it's it's kind of outdated a little bit even though I, it's cool I, feel, as fuck and I love it well I, I might be in the minority i feel like the fog was overrated i always i always felt bit. and i i love like listen like i think i picked john carpenter as the better director than wes craven i feel like the fog was overrated as fuck in my opinion uh the pirate like who drank all the rum? Where's the rum going? I, the, the pirate <laughs> shit. I mean, maybe it's like I wasn't around back then in in the time that it came out. But I remember watching it uh, like when I was a kid on TNT 
when the fog would come on. And I know it was edited for TV, but there's not much to edit out because it's not a violent movie, really. The yeah. fog, the original fog. And I'm it like, kind oh. of like, I was bored as fuck, dude. Most of the time, I was like, I don't give a fuck about this goddamn fucking Captain Jack Sparrow Blackbeard <laughs> idea of a ghost coming out and getting their fucking revenge and getting treasures. I mean, it's not a bad movie. Don't get me wrong. The original fog is good. I understand why people love it, but I think that when you, when people are trying to say it's one of John Carpenter's like legendary movies, get me the fuck, get me the fuck out of this conversation. Cause there's no way there's no yeah, way. I mean, it's a good John Carpenter film. It's you know, a great, like, it's a good one. It's not even great. It's good, but it's not great. No, uh, no, it's not, it's not great. And it's got a bunch of problems with it. And the remake was just like a fucking, it was, it was like, even, even worse, for that, yeah. it was, yeah, it was, it was a smack in the fucking yeah. ass of, of darkness and, and dog shit and poop, poop, Ron, fucking poop, uh, random pick, carry the remake. Did you see this? Cause I yeah, didn't fucking, I, see no, it. it was all right. It was fuckable. Okay. That's fair enough for me. It's Cause fuckable. I never saw it. It's I fuckable. love Chloe Grace Moretz. She's great. Yeah. And she's hot, but, uh, uh it was, a, it actually, first off, I don't think Carrie needed to be remade. Uh, it was already good. But she did a good job. Uh, actually, she did a really, really good job. And the movie wasn't bad because it it, it kind of did its own thing and it updated the movie a little bit for the audience. But uh, ultimately, they kept the the spirit of the original Carrie in there. So yeah, Carrie, it's not bad. It's not bad. I feel like it's fuckable. It's not. You need to watch the original one with uh, Sissy Spacek uh, to get the full touch on the wiener. But this one's not bad. It's fuckable. Yeah, I agree with that, and uh, I just do just want to say that uh, Ohio State just won. Just got that. Oh wow! That what an underdog team that everyone should root for. That. Wow, hey, they've never won a BCS. They, they, they beat they they beat Notre Dame, but Notre Dame's good school, good team. Notre Dame. Ohio when's State the won. last time those fuckers won a BCS? Never. <laughs> they are one of the most popular teams, by the way. But Ohio Someone State call the Gipper. That, that that's fucking wild. That's fucking wild. Uh, I, I'm going to let you do it because you love this movie, Jay. I, I don't love it nearly as much as you do. Where would you put 13 Ghosts? I, I put this one that's pretty rad. <laughs> I'm talking to you like Robbie Amell or uh, Stephen Amell from where would you put this? Yeah, I'm ace now. Thank you. I just want to <laughs> say, uh, listen, I, I, listen, man, I can, the I can DWL write, great, appreciates I can, I can write you. great stories, man. If you just give me a chance, I got something going here. <laughs> just give me a chance. Let me rock. Let me cook. Uh, I, I think that 13 Ghosts is uh, pretty rad. I'm not going to be stupid and try to put it That's at fair. Uh, almost such as the sun. I don't think it's that level. But there were so many things. That, I feel like what makes me love this movie so much is is the is the nostalgic factor. I remember getting this on DVD and watching it, and then that it was the first time I remember seeing special features where they they showed all the ghosts and their stories. Like uh, if you if you go on the special features of the original DVD. And like you could go to each ghost and and uh, uh, Cyrus, I think that the, the the bad guy in the movie would talk about how he caught them and what their origin story was. I thought that was fucking cool. I love the movie. I think it's it's a it's a very rock and roll ghost story. It's not scary, but it's just fun. It's just fun. But I, yeah. I it's pretty rad for me. I would I, so I actually expected to argue with you on that one, but I, I agree. I think. I think the movie's not great. I think the way the movie's made is kind of shitty. The editing is shitty. It, the story's broken. There's a bunch of stuff wrong with it, but it's cool as fuck. So Mike like hates you Matthew said, Lillard is what you're saying. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> all right. Uh, Matthew Lillard, I'd sit on his face. I mean, I'd oh put a TV God. on his face any day. Can't uh, wait for no. him to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but what a cool idea. And like you said, a cool backstory and those mm -hmm. ghosts and all that sh were cool. Pretty rad. is filled up. So October... You can see it does a good job. We should do a part two now. We should do a part two because we're already absolutely. Filled up. Yeah, I agree. And now that we have a section filled up, let's save the rest. We got of some. These for we got some two. films to go through here, and I, I'm looking at it. I'm 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 checking them out, and there's already some fat, sexy ones. We can't we can't play with it right now. We got to do a part two. Yeah, and we're not even halfway through the October releases, so this is perfect. Here in a couple weeks, we'll do an October releases part two. Tons of bangers. But that's a sexy shit. ass. I like that. I like our. I like what we've got so far. Well, I think our list looks very nice. Very. We're one hundred percent. We are off to a great fucking start, man, and I love it. Um, I love it, and I love all of you, and I like sleeping with men. But more important than that, wait. I got. Who am I here? 
What are we? Oh, this is the movie. The great show. John oh, I'm Nash. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was doing. The, I was doing the stepfather thing. You know what he's like. Oh. No, she's like Rob. You, do you have that? On who the am list? I here? The stepfather. Oh, he didn't come out in October. The remake was in October, so no, the, the remake. Yeah, the, the the remake's not good. Yeah, now I gotta rewatch it. It did have the guy from Nip Tuck in it, so there was that. You know. Mm. Um. Oh my god, that's fucking wild, dude. Hey man, you, what? Hey, I think our list looks fucking hot. It looks I sexy. It was sexy. Like, listen, if you walked in back in the day in Hollywood Video or Blockbuster, and that was like employees choice like not all of them obviously but just some of them you'd be like mm, i don't know i don't know what the fuck that is but that seems good you might go check it out in october dude god damn it i miss the fucking days i miss the fucking days where mm -hmm. we could go to a video store like blockbuster or hollywood video or hot or, or movie warehouse or, or movie gallery or what have you and you walk in on October and the pumpkin and the fake fucking cobwebs are all around the windows and that smell, that fucking smell of gumballs and like carpet and like videotapes. And you walk in there and you're like, man, it's October. I got to rent some horror movies because I'm ready. I'm ready to get down with some horror and I got a party coming on. Ooh, ah! Dude, I, actually, by the way, uh, we were we were already we were too young uh, to experience that, dude. Where you were renting videotapes for your Halloween party coming up, but uh, dude, yeah. how fucking if we were thirty? I'm I'm thirty nine right now. Mike's thirty eight. If we were on Thursday, I'm thirty eight on Thursday. All right, I'm still fucking thirty seven, pal. You shut your bitch ass mouth up. Go listen to Blink One Eight Two. If I uh, want your opinion, I'll put my dick in. Either mouth. way, late thirties, late thirties. Uh, if we were in our late thirties in nineteen ninety nine or two thousand one or two thousand. And we're like, we're going to have a Halloween party. We're going to invite our friends over and shit like that. We got to go to fucking Blockbuster. We got to go to Hollywood mm -hmm. Video or whatever and rent some tapes. Or DVDs, I guess, by that point. Dude, man, we I, I feel like, I, to be honest with you, would you want to be 30? Would you want to be almost 40 years old in nineteen in the 1990s or or be where you currently are? Uh, absolutely where I currently am, because here's the thing. And there's a big reason for this. If you and I did not grow up in the current era we were in, we would have regular jobs because yeah, YouTube wouldn't be a thing. So that's big enough. You all and your awesomeness and this show and what we do for a living is definitely going to trump any nostalgia feeling I have. Cause we're some lucky motherfuckers. I don't know if you guys know that, but Jay and I are some lucky motherfuckers to be able to talk about movies for a living. So for that reason, I will say no, but other than that, like as far as just movie dumb goes, I think I definitely would have wanted to grow up back in the day because you got everybody got excited about the same movies, the new releases. I miss video rental stores. You know what I mean? It was more difficult, but there was something special about it. You know, going to the video store on Halloween when the when the the fucking sky was gray. But you got to remember too, in October, you would go to the video store and a lot of the horror movie releases would be rented out. No, because no. everybody was doing it. Not all of them. Like Not I remember, them. I we remember fought, Halloween Six was always there for me. And that, nobody no, rented Halloween, that piece of no, shit. No, Halloween Six was always rented out. <laughs> yeah, I remember never oh, being it? able. Yeah, yeah dude. I like when me like that's why I was always pulled to the, like probably that's why I've watched that movie so many times because every time I went to rent that fucking movie, it was always rented out, and I couldn't get it. I'm like fuck. And then when it was available and you could see it that, my house. dude, there was something about it. It's so it, like there was like a fucking sexy ecstasy when you see that <laughs> VHS behind the behind the uh, the VHS box. So oh, it was yeah. available and you'd be like, oh, and then you take it and you're like, God damn it. I got it. Like I remember <laughs> you uh, would grab uh, it. But like, Yeah, dude, uh, there was a time uh, I think it was how I think it was Halloween six. Cody and I, my brother. We called uh, our local video store, and uh, the Halloween Six was brand new. It had just come out to VHS. We asked for it to be held, and uh, they actually did hold it. And then they call. And back in the day, they used to call your fucking local landline because there was no cell phones, and be like, <laughs> "Hey, this is Video Selection. We've got your Halloween Six uh, on hold. If you would like to come get it, uh, it'll be here until whatever." Dude, yeah. and then and then uh, I remember one time. Um, uh, I think that what happened was it's like they didn't, I was in school and then mom picked me up and like, well, somebody from video selection called and they got your movie ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went out to video selection dude, and we rented it. And that was like where it all began uh, for like the sexiness of Halloween six. But yeah, dude. Yeah, man. 
That was what, it. That, and it sucks, dude. The 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 the, the, uh, the new generation will never know. Like it's like a time capsule in our brains. They they will never know that feeling, that uh, struggle, what it was like, what it was like to reserve a movie and be so excited when it came out on video that you're gonna go get it and that you were like in a line to get it and then now it's your turn and you're gonna go get it or just to go into the video store smell that fucking smell. You all yeah. know what we're talking about. That carpet smell, that gumball smell because they had gumball machines or whatever, and and and, and just you know, to peruse around and find something unique and weird on the, on the video shelf. Cause it had a weird cover and you pick it out. I remember that's how I watched ghost town or, or, or yeah, ghost town, a horror movie. And then also the video games, dude, what a fucking fabulous era. It was, it was, yeah. it's one of a kind, a unique fucking era that will never, ever, ever be seen again. It sucks. Hell, it does hell suck, fucking- dude. Hell of a time to be alive, man. Hell of a time to be alive. And by the way, this, I don't know why I just randomly saw this one uh, uh, from Smudge. Oh, where'd it go, Smudge? Smudge was like, oh, All Hallows Eve is the first terrifying movie. Why does no one understand? It's like, dude, we get, I understand that was the no. first appearance of Art the Clown, but it's not the first fucking terrifying movie. Calm right? down, it's just man. Like a, it's just like in a dick, comic book movie. Your dick Wolverine, is leaking might have appeared in the incredible hawk but that's yeah. not issue number one of wolverine you know what i'm saying it's all right i appreciate you being here i just want to let you know we know we fucking i've never seen that movie by the way so i can't talk shit i've never seen all hell's <laughs> yeah, well, I, was fine, saying, I know I mean, he was there yeah it's like by the way you assholes like the actual halloween first fucking actual halloween featuring michael myers with a novel <laughs> yeah you know learn uh, we are, oh, no, uh, we, we read, that read that. I, I meant to click on Austin. Austin said, "Did you guys know in Halloween comic lore, Night Dance, Night Dance, mm. uh, Michael is the wellspring for all known evil. He's so omniscient, omnis, omnificent, om, omniscient, 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 omni- uh, omniscient, Omicron, variant that he manipulates, manipulates, he manipulates people's futures for fun and basically controls. So he's goddamn yes. Shang. He's like Shang Tsung. <laughs> he does some wild <laughs> shit." They actually Your took that idea. <laughs> they took that idea from the original Halloween novel, where like if someone in the school, not the school, but the fuck the Smiths Grove, when one of the kids would fuck with him or one of the nurses would do something he didn't like, something bad would just naturally happen to them. They would fall. Oh no, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Whatever the fuck. Yeah. So I think that was a play on that. But yeah, it's fucking wild, dude. Like that's one of the fun things about Michael Myers, though. You got the book and you got the awesome comic books, which we've done some walkthroughs for. They have some great stories. Yeah. Um. And that's what they should do with the next one, too. They should just come up with some random shit and say, fuck it, let's James Bond this bitch. We don't need everything to be canon. Why not? Let's fuck around and find they out. Can, I feel like in a in a uh, TV situation, Michael Myers, there's no limit to what they could do with it. Uh, they could do a Dr. Loomis files. They could do the young Loomis um, leading up to the films. They could do... Actually, I'll take that back. They should never do a young Michael Myers or any bullshit. No. We're not doing young Indiana Jones here. The uh, Chronicles of Michael the Chronicles Myers. Of, yeah, we're not doing Junior. that shit. The, the best I'll give you is uh, young Loomis, and I would love to see that story because I would love to have that character more and more fleshed out. Yeah. Uh, and, and and have the series. I like. I would probably do like three seasons. Not even three. I'd do two seasons with Loomis and leading all the way up to Halloween, the original Halloween release. You know, and that's where the the the, the series ends with him I going with with, that. with the nurse to go pick up Michael. I feel like that's how you do that and tie it in perfectly. And then after that, I'm done. I don't really need to see anything else. I don't want to see a backstory with Michael. I don't want to. I don't want to have like why his powers are the way that it is. I don't know. But yeah, um, yeah. but if you got the right director, actor. I'd fuck. With yeah, you got to get the right actor right, again. Ethan Hawke. I I I, I guarantee Dude. you. He, yeah, I, I think now I think Ethan Hawke turned great. me on. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's sexy. It's sexy. But um, as far as Michael Myers goes, as long as you're not trying to give you give him a, a backstory that makes sense for his character, why is he like what he is? What are we doing here, Murray? Yeah, Phil, uh, or Donahue? What's his name? Uh, the the guy that's like hey, you are not the father, Murray. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Murray, 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 Murray. Yeah, Murray yeah. Povich. Yeah. Good old then boy. you're good to go. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm with you, man. Andrew Keith says, Mike, what did you think about one more time? Well, Andrew, I'm trying to get Jay to watch it. I want him to cry with me. I want us to hold each other's cocks. Talk about the old days. 
enjoy each other's seams. Why don't you write a song about why in the hell I would ever do that? <laughs> we're, I'm going to make Jay watch. What we're going to film for a Halloween Horror Month coming up this week, and uh, I'm going to make Jay watch it personally. I'll tell you, I loved it. What I think about the two releases is that I love One More Time. Um, it's fucking beautiful. The video is beautiful. It made me cry a whole bunch. Just the line, do I have to die to hear you miss me? Fucking heartbreaker. Uh, it's an amazing song. It's a great ballad. I think it's going to be fucking huge. I actually like the other song they released, the uh, More Than You Know, even better because it's pure fucking Blink and what Blink should sound like today. I love them both. It's There's never been a better time to be a Blink fan. That's just a fact. There's never been a better time. I'm so fucking happy. I'm going to come like on Jay's chest. has been trying to sell me what? a Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> You're ne never going to get a Zoom hey, Zoom like this, buddy. It's got the twin cam. 1998 Camaro. Never been a better time. <laughs> Got twin cams. This go pick you up some ladies at the Piggly Wiggly. It's gonna be great. All right. Oh shit. Hey, let's get the fuck out of here. We gotta, yeah, go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We have women to please. Not disappoint. Yeah, disappoint. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we're writing a storybook about how to disappoint your loved one, <laughs> but still be respectful. Yeah, but be respectful. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, great time, guys. Uh, what a great discussion. Awesome time. Overall, yeah. you guys are amazing. Uh, thank you guys for showing up and hanging out with us. Um, love you guys, like we say, and uh, we'll see you on the on the flip flop on the flip side of the situation Fucking soon. Super soon. We love you guys. Good night. See you guys. Bye. See you. Bye.